All right, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, game number two now, this best of three, and, yeah, pretty boring series so far, so. Uh, hoping we can yeah, I mean, I don't know. like a few 60-minute games here and there. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Been there, done that. Naga, resident sleeper. So boring. <laughs> wow, what a game one. What a game, bro. <laughs> Jesus. That was, uh, that was quite the finish. I mean, to be fair, obviously it had a lot of slow points, nice. but that last fight, I mean, it, that made up for it plus more. I mean, that was just absolutely chaos. And oh, it was just, it was it was just 60 minutes of edging for the most part, really. Yeah, you could say that, but anyways, this is what it is. And the final result, Na'Vi taking it. So up one game to nothing. So Alliance, they have to have that, what I like to call it, the short-term memory syndrome of forget about it. It happened. It's done. This is a completely new game. Uh, let's look to take this one out Ten for us, the third game, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'm breaking CBK, joined by Tsunami, of course, and uh, we got the Five draft underway. Dark's here, first pick for Alliance. Juggernaut Monkey King in response Reserve here. Time. Yeah, in previous series, I was giving Alliance for a lot of praise for being able to, you know, march to the beat of their own drum and pick heroes that weren't really being picked by other heroes. I mean, by other teams that are going for, like, Skyraths and Ogre Magis and stuff like that and heroes that have just kind of fallen out of the meta. But you now this is not looking like a very, you know, alliance style draft. It's look like it's looking like a meta draft. And I imagine it's because they're not willing to experiment in this not elimination phase, but still you would rather be in the winner's bracket for, you know, the grand finals moving forward in the Summit Seven qualifier. Mm -hmm. Our spirit in response for Alliance. To go with that Darkseer. Yeah, this this is kind of an interesting start here. I mean, Darkseer hasn't necessarily been heavy priority, I feel like, in a lot of these games I've been casting. Yet in this series, again, being uh, first picked by Navi last game, I want to say, and then uh, Alliance taking it for themselves first pick this time around. So I don't know if it's just a matchup specific thing or um, if this is them kind of just leaning on Darkseer. I think it's just been something that's coming into vogue recently. Same thing with kind of like clockwork every once in a while. It's just that you never really see Darkseer banned by any teams because no team is just like, oh god, this guy's going to pick Darkseer. It's going to completely screw up our, all of our strategies. So you let him through and then oftentimes he will be picked in like the second phase once you've decided like, okay, well now we know what kind of supports the <laughs> enemy team are picking to make sure that they don't pick stuff like Coddle. But Navi are somewhat punishing this early Darkseer pick, which isn't, you know, it's not that big of a deal for a Darkseer. It may just mean that Alliance will consider jungling him earlier because having to deal with Mana Leak is a big issue for a Darkseer, especially if it's a Mana Leak combined with a Juggernaut who wants you to stand still. So, yeah, Navi are responding appropriately to such an early Darkseer pick with this Coddle. And it's the hero that isn't seen too often. And it's one that is pretty safe in this draft is typically the most common counterpick to a Coddle is something like a Night Stalker. But there's no real easy way to fit a Night Stalker into Alliance's draft. So, yeah, they're going to get away with this Coddle pick. And, you know, Darkseer will eventually build Greaves and stuff like that, but his laning phase is going to suffer. Yeah, nice counter definitely coming out from Navi right there. And, you know, whenever we do see a Coddle, I, I feel like the idea of him seeing a, in an aggressive lane is, is potentially there. But as you're su suggesting, perhaps good against the Darkseer. And if anything, wants to use him to babysit the Juggernaut Navi's in this case. Uh, he expect to be in a safe lane. They are going to be going up against a Dazzle now. That's picked up from Alliance, one of their more go-to heroes. You know, a go-to hero that Alliance really was known for for a long time there was Ogre Magi. They've been running a lot of right. Ogre recently, but Ten I feel like that's kind of died off a little bit. The Magnus being banned, you know, the Ogre are not maybe as strong Five anymore, so remaining. this whole buff strategy not as relevant here. Yeah, and I mean, this game, it won't really find a place yet again. The Alliance have kind of picked their offlaner and Roamer right off the bat, and same thing with support, and you know, they're holding on to their carry pick. But they're going to have to pick a carry that can deal with Alliance blinding light. And Lifesteal is still in the pool, so I really like this Batrider pick from Navi because it kind of discourages you going for something like a Lifestealer. And Juggernaut's the other hero that kind of has a pretty easy time with blinding light as you can just hit the Blade Fury and take it off. So whoever Alliance go for either is going to be something like a Split Pusher that will not really be, you know, paying attention to team fights and blinding light. But the problem is that, you know, Coddle doesn't mind Split Push. He will take your split push with a smile on his face. So it's, a, it's definitely a strong draft from Na'Vi that Alliance may be suffering having to keep their core picks this late into the draft. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see what they end up with here. Again, who's Loda going to play and who's Limp's going to play is really what it comes <laughs> down to, you figure. TA still uh, comes to mind. 
Yeah, TA is still in the pool for mid, and I mean, I know Loda really loves a good troll warlord game, but oh yeah, I don't really know if it'll be the best this game as Wukong's command. Seneko proved last game that he definitely prioritizes that early basher, which a lot of Monkey Kings have kind of fallen out of favor with it, which I don't really understand. Like, do yes, that. Solar Crest is a wonderful item, but Wukong's command basher is just, it's so big of a power spike for the Monkey it's King. Game it's so difficult. It's definitely game changing. But uh, for some reason, a lot of Monkey Kings haven't been favoring it too much. And oh, they actually go for a Phantom Lancer, which is a hero that can kind of split push, and it's a hero that can deal with Blinding Light because Doppelganger will be able to purge that off. And it's a hero that deals somewhat well with Juggernaut. It's kind of a give and take because Juggernaut's Omni Slash will get mitigated very heavily by all the illusions of PL. But at the same time, Juggernaut usually doesn't like having to build Blade Fury. I mean, Battle Fury and stuff like that that can kind of burn through illusions. But I wouldn't be surprised if you see an early Maelstrom even on this Juggernaut. A lot of times they've been going for like Yasha, Manta Style, and you know, casual. I mean, uh, picking up a Diffusal after that. But I think a Maelstrom would really have a good place this game. Yeah, just to seriously, just with that Phantom Lancer, maybe the the positives that he brings. I. I guess when it comes to just creating all those illusions, the idea that it could be taken out pretty quickly with the Bat Rider, with the Coddle, Illuminate, Spam, you know, balance strikes from a distance, a Monkey King. So it's kind of a give and take. It goes back to that idea here with the Phantom Lancer. So I, I don't know if I'm really sold on this uh, on this PL necessarily, but I know, you know, to hear that Loda has tendency to play uh, throughout history, although I think if you survey a lot, of, uh, a lot of competitive players right now, a lot of drafters even across the board, Phantom Lancer would be on bottom of tier list for a lot of those uh, a lot of those drafters as far as carries oh, yeah. go. I feel like so. I'm like I'm a XPL spammer, but I hate it when this hero is picked in competitive because it just never really seems like you will watch this Phantom Lancer go into fights and just not deal damage because it's mainly a product of Diffusal Blade just getting massively nerfed and Illusions in general getting massively nerfed. So it's so you have such a small window in which PL really becomes effective. And the comparison I give is what does a PL do better than a juggernaut? And the list is very short because he comes online later. He doesn't push as well because his illusions are much worse than what a healing ward provides in terms of, you know, just sustaining an entire push. And, you know, whenever you pick up items, juggernaut seems to do better with each item. Like Manta style almost feels more effective on juggernaut because of the crit. The diffusal blade almost feels more effective on juggernaut because of the synergy with blade fury. So, you know, I'm not a fan of whenever the hero comes out, but a lot of teams have been able to show that they can win with it, and Alliance are feeling confident with it in this game. That they are, and uh, they're going to have to win with it right here to at least force that third game again. This is the winner bracket final, so worst case, get bounced down to the loser's bracket. But And actually, we didn't even really mention that yet, but uh, there is the other series currently going on Fantastic. as well. Uh, they, they had to do a bit of rescheduling. Nice. Empire. What the hell? And uh, Mouse Sports also playing at the same time, so I'll try to get you some updates there. But yeah, PA, wait, what? PA mm -hmm. final pick for Alliance. Yeah, so okay. I was considering it to be a core option for Alliance before the Keeper of the Light came out because Alliance has had a tendency to run PA. But I don't know, PA really gets screwed by Keetle, uh, Coddle, Keeper. Keeper Coddle <laughs> because yeah, Blinding Light is a massive issue and Phantom Assassin doesn't really have very much mana, which granted mana leak goes based off a of percentage, not just like a flat mana leak, but PA needs to move around a lot and she needs to be able to use Dagger and Phantom Strike, even though they're pretty cheap spells in terms of their cost, it's still critical to allowing PA to do what she wants. And I mean, even the presence of like a Juggernaut, like he will very easily build an MKB, or hell, he could even go for a Silver Edge if he wanted to, which I don't think is the plan this game. But yeah, Juggernaut deals with PA very easily, especially with the speed that he farms at. And so I'm surprised that they go for this, especially because neither of these are super strong mid laners. Like back in the day, Phantom Lancer was considered to be like a counter to like Invoker and some other mid laners, but he's fallen off and PA has also fallen off. PA used to also be a very prominent mid laner and you know, it's still seen every once in a while, often with a, something like an Ogre Magi. And in this game, Earth Spirit is probably going to have to spend a fair amount of time in the mid lane helping Loda. Oh, okay. No, so they're actually sending Limp mid lane. Hmm. So Limp's on the PL and Phantom Assassin from Loda, yeah. Interesting. And then the Tinker final pick, man, they got the lasers now. They got the Blinding Light of Coddle. Yeah. There's a lot of evasion here. And then Aghanim Scepter is going to be so value on Dendi's Tinker this game. So, 
I'm definitely preferring Navi's draft because Alliance, it's like they have a they have a they have a strategy in mind. Like I can see what they're going for, but it's a risky strategy at best. Yeah. Well, this is uh, again, it's uh, not not elimination game, but this is to knock them down to the losers bracket right here, unless they win and force a third game. So. We'll see. We'll see if they're going to be able to do it, but it's definitely setting up to be a tough one, a very tough one. Yeah, that final pick, Tinker, it seems like such a valuable pick. You know, again, I was looking at some options that were left open at that point. I think Shadow Fiend was still available. I think TA, as we talked about, even. So a little more of the popular ones, but they go the Tinker route, and it makes a lot of sense. Again, the, yeah. the Ags alone is going to do so much value here, as you pointed out. And how just like the, even beyond the blind, which is, you know, the main thing to focus on considering all these right clickers, but the burst damage itself, like PA is a hero that emphasizes physical survivability with the evasion. She has pretty high armor and pretty high agi gain, but she doesn't deal well with magic damage. And there is a lot of magic damage on Na'Vi. You're going to have March and PA is going to like, you can't not fight into March, at least not until you get your BKB. And you're going to have Illuminates coming in. You're going to have to fight into Firefly. And so even like the turn rate is going to be an issue. So PA is going to be ex needed. She's going to need a lot of protection this game to be able to deal damage. Yeah. Here we go, Navi. Landing phase setting up right here. General on the Batrider, of course. He's got those boots early on at the top lane. You have, oh, look at that. It's Zaneko as a courier. What else is new? On the Monkey King there. 30 seconds to Sitting battle. on the battery room himself, Dendi. It's going to be picking it up more than likely. Looks like they are going to have the Coddle at the bottom lane, though. You know, you talked about the possibility. I brought that up even about the aggressive Coddle, the aggressive dual lane. But no, going to protect the Juggernaut with him instead and pr pressure the Darkseer, as you were pointing out there, too. So, Phantom Lancer, he's going to get the early Poor Man Shield, a couple of tangos shared to him to end up in this middle lane, which, yeah, I'd figure this is potentially going to be a difficult time for Phantom Lancer. Yeah, unless if Earth Spirit spends a lot of time in the mid lane, because Tinker's not a hero that can really deal with two people. He can deal with one person very easily, but if Earth Spirit's just in the vicinity already, the Tinker will be nervous because, you know, uh, Earth Spirit, actually, yeah, so Orb of Venom is on hand scan, and then Spirit Lance slow is also quite a bit, and so that's a lot of damage that a Tinker will have to deal with. But... Right now, Earth Spirit is more interested in making sure that General gets shut down, which General has boots straight out of the base, so he's pretty safe, assuming he doesn't skill anything up, which now that he sees the Earth Spirit, goes straight into the Napalm, and Monkey King is here with Jingu. Yeah, he's got that Jingu, so somebody is potentially going to be dying right here. It seems like General's the one that's pretty low with the charges added up for Monkey King. See how hard he's hitting each ammo. It's going to be four shots, it feels like, at this rate. General's still flying away, though. Did go that sticky Napalm, as we saw, though. And so as far as escaping goes, it's not nearly as easy. EGM will finish the job. And that's a first blood in favor of Alliance there. So, yeah, yeah. I said that he's going to wait on his skill point and because I was like, oh, okay, well, if he sees her spirit, he'll go for Firefly to be able to stay safe. But no, he actually goes for Napalm. And, and that was, I, I, they thought that they could go aggressive, which, you know, Monkey King is great if you take Jingu at one and being able to kill targets. But you're up against a Dazzle. That is a lot of heal. And you're, like, basically two melee heroes. Yes, Batrider is ranged, but you have to get into creeps, and you're going to get heal bombed. And now, they're going in again on Loda, but... Uh, it's a little bit yeah. too far back. I'm just watching this Tinker, man. He's, he's got the march early on. He's just spamming it yeah. into the tower here against Limp. You can tell he's having trouble <laughs> dealing with that. To say the least, yeah. And it's not going to get easier with levels, because no, oftentimes, like... In some matchups, you're like, okay, well, the first four levels are in the favor of this hero, but then after that, it's in the favor of the other hero. No, Tinker has the advantage pretty much consistently in this lane against the Phantom Lancer. So it's a good idea to go for March, as Rockets will be easily to be disjointed by a Doppelganger, and uh, he's almost definitely going to be leveling up Doppelganger to be able to deal with the Blind of Laser. So good idea to go for March early on. And yeah, Darkseer knew that he would have a tough, tough lane, so went straight for the Iron Talon and has just been jungling. And, Coddle's okay with that. Even though you haven't been able to like get lane dominance over a Darkseer, Coddle does a lot if you give him farm, and he's just been content to farm the jungle in the meantime. Yeah, he can do that fine himself, so it's kind of a give and take right there for sure. And you know, this kind of goes back also to, now they've got the first blood with it, so in hindsight it seems like it's decent for Alliance, but they're sending the Earth Spirit to the top lane, and he's staying up there now. Limp's playing very aggressive in a Dendi here, even using the Doppelganger forward to remove that laser, but 
in the end, he will have to fall back as obviously the march comes out. But the point of getting out was top lane, by the way. Seneko, he's gone low. He's trying to get the kill on EGF first. He will fall, though. Monk King dead. Gets the kill on to Dazzle, however. It does Batrider. As those sticky knee pumps were adding up. And now they would like to go Loda as Biver joins the party. But he's just low on mana if we're going to illuminate. He has Firefly. He's waiting on it for some reason. Yes. Oh. Ah, that seemed very odd choice by General. Yeah, not only waiting for it, but... Not really reacting to Dazzle porting in, and now he's going to fall as well as the Coddle. And now Seneco's like, oh, <laughs> EG has a freaking Respect heal. the Dazzle. Nice. Like, yes. This is why they added team chat. <laughs> Thank you, Loda. Oh, my Thank you. God. Like, I, I love it. That was great from Alliance, sure, but that just felt like Navi throwing themselves at them. Respect the Dazzle, respect the Blightstone that Phantom Assassin has. You can't make those moves against, like, these kinds of heroes. It's a, it's tri lane to begin with, and you don't really have the best aggressive heroes, but they just go in one by one. General opted to not go in on the PA. I think he was expecting PA to blink, so, he, like, PA kind of went into the side shop area, and then he was like, well, if I walk to her, then she's just going to blink back to the Earth Spirit. But then just put up Firefly. There were like six stacks of Napalm on that PA, but yeah, they get punished heavily. And EGM is a happy, happy man right now because time and time again on this Dazzle, I see him having to skill up Grave extremely early on. But nah, this game, we're about damage. We're not about defense. And he's 4 1 and 1 because of that. So he's off to a fantastic start. And well, he's, he's got a Medallion of Courage already queued up, ready to be picking up here shortly. So. We did some nice amp damage, also some protection if need be. We'll say this, as exciting as it is for Alliance to be about, the cores of Navi are doing great now. Seneko, yeah, he's going to run right into them. He was trying to maybe sneak in for a bounty rune steal, but instead he's found by Limp as well as Hounskin. And that ends up being an easy kill. Top lane, Viper's going to be picked up again. Loda and EGM come together to catch him off in the woods. And I don't know if he was just sitting up there illuminate spamming or what, but... They find him and they get the kill as a result. The Earth Spirit finds Denny in the jungle, but I don't think he's going to do it. But he has to deal like with General. He's going to roll out. Don't get away. But I'm surprised the, that yeah. Keeper has been spending time up here. Like I was saying, he can farm up the jungle just fine, and it's pretty much like a uninhibited jungle. I mean, Hanskin's in it right now, but there's not very much that an Earth Spirit can do. And instead, Viper has been spending time in the top lane, and this is a top lane that's been winning. It's not like the tri lane has been kind of beaten down and you can kind of spam out Illuminates and they'll be like, oh god, Coddle, I don't want to fight you. No, they are comfortably dominating the lane, and Keeper of the Light learns his lesson, but now his jungle has kind of been occupied. It's on the bot lane, Pycat wants to find a kill, but Surge is up, and you can't really go on any of these people, at least not until Coddle with Mana Lake pops in, which actually is not skilled yet. Yeah. You got Batrider kind of nearby, but again, he's on level four. No lasso by any means, oh, nice but they are going to stop Hanskin with the balance strike, and that was an Omni Slash committed to guarantee the kill. So, But it's a nice find there for Pycat, and he'll enhance his farm as a result of it. So it goes back to the point, though, made just before. It's, again, as pretty as this has been for Alliance with 72 hero kill lead, the cores of Na'Vi are doing great. Both Dendi and Pycat seem to be getting their farm, and that's what really matters in the, in the end here. For them, of course. Yeah. So Tinker, and again, he's one that takes a little bit to quote unquote come online, but he uh, gets the what's the soul ring, the bots. I think it's kind of the earlier build, right? And, he and then he's around. definitely on pace to make life very unpleasant for this PA and uh, Phantom Lancer because I mean, once Dendi gets a blink dagger, it's kind of difficult for Alliance to be able to do anything to stop him. Earth Spirit basically needs to be around, or you need to get a really lucky vacuum or something. Otherwise, Dendi's just going to spam out March, and like Phantom Assassin can't farm inside of a March. PL can't farm inside of a March. You just have to leave and go somewhere else. Well, Dendi back in the middle lane. Does have that soul ring with the bottle, of course, and uh, continue to push out with that March of Madness. That's level three of it. The level two laser picked up. Machines. March of Madness was pretty sick, March though. of Madness. Yeah, no, you're it's definitely like a, right. It's like a mask of madness that gives <laughs> you, like a march that gives you lifesteal. Yo, I'd be on board with that. Top lane, Biver. Again, he's up here still and spamming out with the Illuminate. But this time he's, he's somewhat hugging his tower, so he's not going too far out. Just kind of leeching experience by himself up at the top lane. Instead, Batrider. Batrider's found himself, I guess, jungling quite a bit. The Shankro boots picked up. And he's going to also yeah. find Hanskin, perhaps. I guess that's another reason why Biver hasn't really been jungling too much, because Batrider is recovering in this lane, because, yeah, he also got very, very downtrodden with how the PA 
Dazzle lane went, so he's just like, I'm gonna play it safe in my jungle, and so is Seneko. They are all content to be farming down here, and Viver is just insurance to make sure that the uh, top lane doesn't push into the tower, but in the meantime, he'll be farming up the secondary jungle, so they're reacting well to how poorly that tri lane went, because sometimes you have a tendency to just continue throwing bodies in there, but they're showing that they're respecting the Dazzle and PA now. Our spirit. Dark's here, they're roaming in. In fact, rolling in is Hanskin right here. The 8-minute bounty Reno's already picked up though by General. And now General's gonna start applying some sticking ear palms. Out comes the rockets, the primal spring on both of them. Earth Spirit probably in trouble still, although no surge Pike to save him. But Pike and, oh, the nice silence at the last second. Port's coming in, and Pike has to spin out. Here comes PA as well as the Dazzle, though. How much are they gonna commit to this? He jumps on a Seneco back here to slow down. But now Pike jumps back in with the Omni Sides and bounces over to Dazzle even as he gets the kill on Earth Spirit. But now Pike he committed He's for dead. this, and he is gonna end up dying as a result of it, too. The wall just in case. <laughs> Want to go the other direction, I guess, but or perhaps support coming in. But yeah, clean up for Alliance though. They they get the kill on a pie cat in two for one in their favor. Yeah, good reaction by Loda. I uh, I'm surprised that Pie Cat went in for that Omni Slash. I mean, like he wasn't he actually was not hoping to bounce to Dazzle. Bouncing to Dazzle was like, oh god, this moved me further than I wanted to go. But even then, he didn't have Blade Fury and he didn't have a TP. So chances of him getting out of that even after successfully Omni Slash and the Earth Spirit are pretty slim, especially once you confirm that Loda's in the vicinity. So, yeah, Pycat definitely gets punished, was a little bit too greedy trying to find an Omni Slash kill, but now he's basically swapping lanes, roll in on the top lane, Hanskin. Oh, nice blind light pushback. Well, by nice, I mean not so nice, because that actually helps him get turn killed in the end. I mean, they had the right idea, but TP support's coming in, and all of a sudden, that was a lost cause right there. So, Coddle, Coddle of the light even. He gets picked off, Juggernaut at least runs away. Seneko, he's got to be careful because, yeah, Jonas a fan eating through trees over here. Doesn't have vacuum, unfortunately. Otherwise, he was pretty positive that Monkey King was in the vicinity, but he has to leave now. Gonna get Boundless struck? Oh. No! He kept canceling it. Trying to find the angle. He could not, though. The Dark Seer is fine. But yeah, PA made this transition. Obviously, got the got the killer two at the bottom lane. Now he's and pushing the out the bottom. And he gets nice. a tower kill. And maybe another and hero kill. kill. The coup de grab proc comes out. Perfect timing. That's RNG for you, baby. So Loda with another kill, but now General trying to make them pay. If he gets this turn kill, that's going to be a streak stopper and a nice bounty for the Batrider, and he'll get it. Nearly 500 bounty for General right there, but at what cost? Because Dark is running him down, but this is a very slippery battle. The vacuum's actually going to miss there. And now here comes Monkey King back into the fight. Meanwhile, EGM. He's going to have he to deal with some beating to the face. He does not have Shell at Grave. You're right, so he has to kind of fight this. The wall comes out, maybe trying to save Seneco. It's dropping the heal. Damage is real, man. That's a continuous what to be. a brilliant wall. He puts down that wall, gives Dazzle yet another target to put some da uh, Oh, wait, top, top lane. lane. Yeah, lane. he has an Omni Slash, but he can't get it off, and the Illusions are now spawned. He has to maybe use it defensively. He's going to put up the Yelling Ward. He's going to try to limp away, but Pycat, it's not going to be enough. Loda comes back in and finishes the job. And all oh, this game, it's, it's a much different pace this time around. Very different. Alliance are basically comfortably winning all the lanes. I mean, mid was basically breaking even, but right now Phantom Lancer has been showing up to a lot of stuff. Limp has been active around the map, whereas Dendi, much like last game, is content to just farm up the jungle and secure his items before he starts participating, which, you know, it's to be expected of a Tinker. He doesn't have BOTs yet. You don't expect Tinker to use TP scrolls and be like, oh, okay, let's go take this fight. But yeah, that's the advantage of picking a Phantom Lancer this early on is that he's going to be active and he's going to be dealing damage and hopefully he's going to be scaling. But right now, Tinker has now completed BOTs, it just needs to be delivered on the courier. And this is when the game gets much more difficult for both of Alliance's carries. Batrider actually has a blink dagger. It almost felt like he was Viver. struggling a little bit. Radiant Jungle goes uh. down. Yeah, they found him in here. God, they're just talking about PA being involved early on. That with the medallion enhancement from Dazzle, and I guess he's almost using it defensively too. In some oh, places, now Monkey King. They're going to run into Monkey King. Now Port is coming in. Tinker nearby. Balance Strike trying to stall this, if anything. Kuda Grav Proc's not really coming out. Not needed, though, although Denny wants to make them pay. Lasso on a Phantom Lancer again. Yeah, they get a nice three stop right here. They drag him out of range. You're right, but the rockets will connect, actually. Those are some long range rockets. And Hanskin, don't think he's One getting out. Oh, oh, my Ooh. God, he does get out some way, somehow. Just in time, actually. Over here, though, now Juggernaut's chasing more. We've seen this happen a couple of times, though, and it's kind of bitten him in the ass before. So, Black Cat, he remembers that for the time being, and he'll decide to fall back instead. EGM. Oh, EGM, yeah, you're dead. Run. He didn't even get Laser. the ward. Oh, that's unfortunate. No rockets uh, just yet, though. He needs to re -arm. Alive? Wow. Oh, he's going in? Bots, yeah, he's well. fine. 
Radiance bottom tower. Well, yeah, this is this is uh, I, I can't imagine how big of a smile EGM must have on his face because, he, like I said, he's never allowed to play aggressive. But they got this medallion early on, and PA is a great hero to synergize with Dazzle when you've got this early medallion. They invaded aggressively into that radiant jungle. They scanned out Viper, who was just quietly farming away in the secondary jungle of invade, and they're like, screw it, let's go for more. PA does get punished in the end but not before killing off the Monkey King in addition. And, you know, it is a bit of a setback to have your carry die like that. But in the meanwhile, Limp is farming. So as long as one of the cores is creating space and the other core is taking advantage of that space, life's good for Lance. Yeah, Monkey King, seven deaths. Jeez, uh, 13 and a half minutes. He has uh, not had a fun game so far. But, you know, Pie Cat I'm actually almost kind of impressed by, but the fact that he's on top of the net worth charts despite him dying a couple of times and seems like, you know, he's been getting caught out of position, but... He's obviously been farming like a madman here when it comes to CS especially, and that's up where the net worth him and Denny are in fact continue to be on top of the net worth charts despite all this action that's going on in the 14-5 to lead here for Alliance. So that's definitely still good news for Nafi, so he can't be too intimidated by the hero kill score once again. They're going to try to catch Darkseer here. Somewhat of a blind Ooh. jump in from Batrider yeah. who misses as a result. Unfortunately, Batrider has subpar nighttime vision, so... Not really easy to spot targets out when you don't have wards down, and so you know some fan gets out. And I believe that was the debut of the Blink Dagger on Batrider, so you would have hoped to get a little bit more than that, but you'll have more opportunities. As no, now. I think he used it actually on the previous fight with PA diving. Oh, there, right, right, so right, you're right, yeah. They knew by now, but yeah, Pycat's still going. Again, he has the march here to assist. Yeah. Lefto yeah. running in with an iron shell. Wall comes out, but Pycat just spins away. However, the Boulder Smash connects. Beautiful land right there. The stun nice is being used. Here comes the Ballast Strike into the Wukong's command, though. And the Omni Slash Batheron gets the kill on Earthspear, but now he's in somewhat of a bad spot. No, he has plenty of teammates here. Darkseer will get picked up as well as the Lasso 2 secure. The Rocket Spam now coming out as Dendi's here as well. On the Tinker, and again, the Alliance have to pretty much cut the losses there and fall back. Yeah, they successfully deny the tower, but they do lose two heroes as a result, and Lasso does eventually connect, so at least Phantom Lancer and PA survive. PA really wanted to go in, and they were weaved up for quite a while, and so if Loda managed to get a crit dagger, would have almost certainly been able to kill off the Batrider or possibly even the Juggernaut, but not lucky this time, but they will try and continue trying as now EGM making his way towards the Talisman of Evasion to finish out the Solar Crest, so definitely not the farm that we're used to seeing on EGM Dazzle. And not the skill build either. Still zero points in Grave, which I am. I love it. I'm so happy to see it. I would have probably put more points in Shadow Wave as opposed to the Poison Touch, but I guess the potential to stun may be more important. To... <laughs> yeah, half Dangerous. a second late there for the vacuum. Just not enough. But you're right. It's and, and again, it's as a Dazzle player myself. Like I'm with you. I love seeing this uh, this aggressive because a Dazzle that gets these earlier levels and. Is he going to max? Oh, no, he does get the 1.9 shot. Like, I was going to say he's going to max out even the Poison Touch, but <laughs> level 3 is good enough value. And with how much action this game has had so far, and it's also a nice another catching tool for the Tinker, even, you could argue. So there, oh, there yeah, is that sure. aspect that it brings as well. And again, it's already a team that's maybe struggling a little bit to really catch this Tinker, as they don't have the strongest crowd control, as we were stressing from the beginning here. So um, in that sense, it makes sense. But, uh, yeah, now he at least has the one shallow grave, so... Has that for the saving tool if need be. But Phantom, uh, Phantom Assassin has a Desolator in the works, and it's coming out pretty nicely here. Oh, and might want to go in. Season Illuminate, but Viber immediately starts TPing out, so he's going to be safe. Hanskin might go for a kick. Nah, he's going to go for the roll. Yeah, and then there's so much minus armor on the side of Alliance. I mean, they don't have anything like a Vengeful Spirit on top of it, but Weave, Solar Crest, and Loda's gonna have that desolator completed these supports are gonna have a very unpleasant time like keeper light is not gonna feel safe he's no. working on his agonim scepter but he's a long ways away from it and so until he completes that he has to get close to creep waves to farm it and get experience from them and so he's gonna have to be pr protected by his team otherwise he's just gonna get insta gibbed i don't know what they're looking for down here bat rider and juggernaut are kind of hunting throughout the jungle down here May maybe somebody was here and they tp'd out but I think they're like preemptively carving out a path for Dendi to blink into, because oh. Dendi has this blink dagger completed of a general. Sh oh wait. Oh wait. Oh no. It was Radiant team. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what they were doing down there. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um. Now, okay, Pycat. He actually does switch it up. So for a second there, he actually had the Battle Fury queued up, 
And that was going to be interesting if that was something that's perhaps even on his mind. But he is going to go more of the Mantis style instead, definitely much more traditional. But is there a reason you can see Battle Fury actually being picked up and useful here, or would that just be not necessary? Yeah, it was the same reason why I thought that Juggernaut would go for an early Maelstrom. He wants to be able to clear out these illusions from PL, because PL is now Diffusal Blade completed, and... Yes, Diffusal Blade did get nerfed a lot, but PL deals zero damage if he... Oh, Lasso onto the Earth Spirit. TP support's coming in, though. They gotta make this happen oh, quickly. I don't think it's quick enough. Yeah, Monkey King whiffed, and he's gonna, gonna, gonna fall right there. General's like, all right, which way do I go now? Over here, Omni Slash is gonna be activated, but that's a shallow Grape Dazzle. This Dazzle, man, has been doing so much work now. He's gonna die, but if he buys the time for a turn kill, it's not gonna happen, though. The TP out is enough, and <laughs> gets the well played from his teammate right there. <laughs> <laughs> Your 4x streak ended on the Dazzle, that's damn well played. Yeah, nice bounty yeah. there. Yeah, again, guys, Ideally, to clarify... they would have been able to kill the Earth Spirit. Uh, well, yeah, they didn't kill the Earth Spirit, you're right, well, he got out there. Uh, but yeah, to clarify again, this is all ally chat, guys. They're not doing that in old chat. I noticed that was being brought up earlier. Yeah, I wish you could all chat well played. <laughs> no. So, just uh, for and whether that's a bug or if that's maybe intended by Valve, like it's it better not be a bug. It better be 100% intended. It would be fun if it's intended, but yeah, just, just to be really clear on that before people start calling out bad manners and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, check it out, man. This this guy's just continues to still dominate and farm. He's 8,700 net worth, still on top of the charts here. And he is ending up going for that Battle Fury. I don't know if the Mantis style was. No, I guess he just gave up on it because it's not on a courier or anything, so. Oh. Finishes off the Yasha, was deciding, hemming and hawing between Mantis style and Battle Fury, but ultimately we'll go for it. Which, you know, I uh, reports of Battle Fury's death are greatly overrated in my opinion. The item is still good. If the item wasn't good, then Anti Mage wouldn't be a hero anymore. That's and they're actually going to go in for Roche right now, which is ballsy. Oh my god, yeah, no, Alliance want to do the same thing. So risky. We have big fight breaking out right here now. Denny's porting. Alliance well. are like, why did our smoke just pop? All of a sudden. Doppelganger away, though, from the Phantom Lance there. He's actually scared himself. Dazzle is going to be pulled in, so no Shadow Great Friend this time. Wukong's man, a great placement around the Roshan pit. That's going to zone them out very effectively. General wants more. Nox jumps man into the Wukong's command, and Darkseer is barely going to get picked off right there. He almost uh, had the chance to get away, but wasn't to be. Doppelganger away from Phantom Lancer, but Hanskin's also going to get picked off. The one-by-one -one syndrome is real on Alliance. They end up losing three. What looked somewhat scary for Na'Vi ends up just being beautiful. <laughs> for them. I think it was just, it was like an awkward situation in which you like walk in on someone in the bathroom or something like that because Alliance, <laughs> their smoke popped and their first thought was, oh, Monkey King must be on a tree. That's why we our smoke popped. Their last thought was that they must be roaching right now. And so they walk everywhere but inside the pit and Batrider fireflies up and he sees all of Alliance and he's just like, oh god. Yeah. Dazzle immediately gets lassoed, he goes down first and then Alliance are like, oh man, we were not expecting this positioning. They tried to back off, but yeah, definitely suffer from some, from some single file deaths. And at least they stopped the Roche attempt, and they can go for it themselves now. But still, it's risky for even Alliance now, even with Roche being at half HP, as now General is scouting it out. And Navi knows they have vision also just below it, so they 100% know. Denny comes back in and. He's ready to fight. He has an eighth of lens, by the way, so extra reach coming out for him. The laser is going to be used. Limp has a doppelganger away. Pycat. Oh God, Roche. He thought about running in. Roshan's evading on the outside. <laughs> He'll finally go back to his lair <laughs> right there. But Coddle is picked off elsewhere. They're really tower. spread out here. Loaded to get him off to the top here. While the bottom fight itself was happening. But Roshan, he's he's confused, man. He's like, do you guys want to fight or not? I just want to go home. Yeah. Poor Monkey King. Yeah, Batrider is burning down all the trees outside of Roshan, so he can't find a good opening. And the Roshan's going to go down. Alliance wow. are going to take it. They're waiting for it. They're going for this. And nice Echo's like, I want to make this happen. Though. Doesn't have a Wukong's command. The Rocket's coming out. Lotus drop in. Doesn't get the Aegis. He does. So he's going to have to activate it right away as the Omni Slash bounces around. But now Pycat, he's silenced down. He can't get a spin off. Not enough mana for it anyways. He'll end up falling. He just got his Battle Fury, too. So no buyback to be had if it wanted right there. fighting against General in the top, and he might die to this Flame Break DOT. He does. Yeah, he is going to end up falling himself. So he's the only victim, though, other than the Aegis he is, as they kill Monkey King and Juggernaut. So <laughs> ends up being a pretty crazy Roshan fight after about a good minute and a half to two, even. But I, I, does Alliance really come out on top there, though? It's I mean, yes, they killed Juggernaut, but the Aegis being burned right away, they needed something to really enhance them, I feel like, and it just it's kind of like neutral, if anything. Yeah, it's pretty neutral right now. Um, the main thing is that Tinker died, and so if... Oh, wait, no, Tinker no, didn't die. Juggernaut oh, died. Okay. Well, then I'm considering that to be an advantage for Na'Vi, because 
without the Aegis, like you see how Alliance are playing so aggressively. They want to be able to have a license to do whatever they want. And they're smoking up, even though they don't have the Aegis. They want to continue finding kills. And Navi are just sitting back. Now, PyCat might get spotted out here if they go south. Which EGM is starting to motion that way. Oh, and he, he sees the Juggernaut. Yeah, he, he doesn't can... have a TP, so he needs to bolt. They're not going to die this, though. That'd be risky. Uh, yeah. Loda. Loda. <laughs> Loda's diving in. All right, they are going. So about that risky talk. The boulder smashes early. That, Bat no Rider Aegis jumps talk. in. He's looking for a lasso. Flame break backwards. Gonna maybe get loaded. No, he can't. EGM those caught. Battle strike on four. Actually, Wukong's command comes out, and now EGM in trouble. He's gonna pop the shallow grave. He's dead. It's just a matter of how long it takes. You see Hanska sitting from a distance. Loda still wants to go in, maybe, but he's throwing out those daggers. Not gonna matter. Now they run back in. Though the vacuum, the wall was a little late. Blinding light pushed back as well, and somewhat of a scattered fight now. Soneko, he's surviving the back lines. Bible will be picked off, but the lasso catches Loda, and he's gonna be burned down by Dendi right there. The rocket laser combo. But now Dendi's in a bad spot himself. He's being gone on by Phantom Lance here, and he too will end up falling. Balance Strike cannot save him, but now it's actually Alliance is the one that's on the run again. So the back and forth battle is real. The primal spring in. Jonas the Phantom will be picked off. So they killed Denny at the end of it, but that seems so ambitious from the beginning for Alliance, and the numbers work out for Navi. I felt like they almost thought that they still had the Aegis on Phantom Assassin, because they had the right idea by, I guess, baiting out some TPs at worst. They, you know, were intimidating the Juggernaut, he retreated deep inside the jungle. And then once it started, a bunch of TPs came out, then Phantom Assassin was like, all right, I'm content. But then they kind of stuck around, and they took the fight, and Monkey King had a great position for a Wukong's command. You know, it's not a basher Wukong's command. He is, in fact, going for that first item, Solar Crest, which uh, this game, I can see the value of making PA miss a lot, which once that blinding light came out, it was another big reason why Alliance were starting to lose the fight. Their carries were not right-clicking. Phantom Lancer got leaked, had no mana, had no ability to purge off the doppelganger. At least he didn't then. He's going to have the Mantis Isle completed soon, and it's going to be a lot easier afterwards. But... Yeah, these carries need a right click if you want to continue winning the fight. So you may have the upper hand at first, but once the rest of Navi comes in, they start using their spells, laser comes out, march comes out, rockets come out, you're going to start losing the fight, and that's exactly what happened for Alliance. And that axe for Tinker, it's it's coming, and we stress how important that's going to be for him this game, especially with the matchups here. Both the PL and the Phantom Assassin especially are going to have to really just deal with it and by deal with it it's just gonna have to be misses coming out and hope that the rng is oh, still scan. favored they them. recall pycat up top okay yeah they want to make a play right here but maybe fighting off a little bit more than they can chew fiber there's a vacuum in the wall comes out as well the omni slash bounce around a lot of illusions there though and now Pycat, he's decided to fall back Seneca puts out the wukongs if anything try to deter them but that's not going to happen so he too will go down so yeah now he had a game plan there unfortunately they did not do the correct math in terms of how many Players were there for Alliance, and they get Well, either that or they were like, oh, PA is not here. We can probably take the fight. But Phantom Lancer is, you know, you have the Battle Fury on Juggernaut, but it's not really enough right now. Phantom Lancer is tanky enough to be able to survive the initial burst that his illusions will continue messing up your Omni Slash. And so they went in aggressively with that recall. So it definitely was not a mistake. They had an objective in mind, but Alliance were in position to punish it. And he's pushing out the bottom lane, though. But yeah, Phantom Assassin is mentioned. He's was pushing that out himself and going to fall back as Tinker comes in, though. Dazzle. So he mentioned how a fantastic start he had. Allowed for that earlier medallion, and they made use of it even. But it's kind of slowed down, to say the least. He's, uh, yeah, I've seen that talisman in his inventory for... Yeah. You know, it's, it's important to, uh, like, have have dreams, right? You put, the, you put the poster of, like, you know, a Ferrari on your wall. EGM's looking at that talisman of evasion wistfully. The window for its effectiveness may be, you know, dwindling down, which Solar Crest is always useful, don't get me wrong, but yeah, it would have definitely had a much bigger impact earlier on. But well, right now, vision is the name of the game, and EGM, being the selfless player as he is, knew that he had his fun, and it's it's time to it's time to come back home. Earth Spirit scouting out. He's gonna get some good information right here. They did see Juggernaut nearby, but Juggernaut actually just goes to jungle. He doesn't even realize. How close he is to perhaps a fight breaking out right here. The could grab proc with the dagger. Doesn't really feel too much of it though, but they did get Monkey King actually. I believe they cut him down. Yeah, Juggernaut was a little bit too difficult, I guess. Either that or they didn't feel confident with how much time it would have taken to kill Juggernaut. Otherwise Tinker might have come in or something like that. So they go for the easier kill and they're just bullying Seneko time and time again. He's just trying to help out his team, but Alliance are not having any of that. And 
continuing to shut down the Monkey King is a big deal. Like I said, he's still going for this solar press thing, and that just means that the Basher is even further and further and further away, so it makes sense to continue bullying him. Phantom Lancer, that Manta to go with the Defusal. Again, a very core build on him. Now has that BKB being worked on. They're trying to catch Tinker, but again, it's a hopeful vacuum that's going to miss. And so Tinker will go elsewhere. Back to base. High Cat in general, smoked up, invading. But they're just going to find two supports. Yeah, they're going to get one. Maybe Shallow Grave, he's out of range. So easy pick right there. Whoa, Wukong's command. Oh, that's because Phantom Lancer actually poured it in over here. Yeah, it did. Trying to now catch him, but. Doppelganger will allow him to escape. Alliance is still nearby, though. Thinking about going in. Throws the dagger out, but not going to get the chance to jump, and Navi will now retreat. And that'll be the end of that. Bot or top lane, even. Kano continues pushing it out. He is very close to that axe. And again, that is another good item to have if you're Navi right here. So want to allow him to get that. Same with Tinker, as mentioned before. They're both going to have it at a very similar time at this rate. So a couple of ags going to be huge for Navi next minute or so. And it'll be right around the time that Roche can theoretically respawn. And so while the fight was not too pleasant for Na'Vi, the first attempt, it's going to be a lot easier in the second attempt with all these new items. Because so far, Phantom Lancer is working on a BKB, but he's still kind of a ways away from it. And Phantom Assassin has completed her BKB, so that's a pretty big advantage. But you're going to need more than one core because Tinker is just going to be on the outskirts of the fight. Lode is going to have a heck of a time trying to track down the Tinker and kill the Tinker. I like Coddle's quick buy, or is his Q up buy. He's got the gem and then five wards. <laughs> oh, he's go. done his job. Yeah. He got the Aghanim Scepter, you get the gem next, and, and you know, you don't really need anything else. Yeah, sure, you can get a four step if you want. Aether Lens is sometimes comedic for massive ranged mana leaks, but no, nah, you... You force this Monkey King to have to be support for too long, it's time to return the favor and let Seneko get some farm for once. Juggernaut MKB. Again, it's queued up, speaking of that. So I'd love to have that as far as a nice damage enhancement for him. We'll go in that Battle Furious Restress, and well, that's uh, good for the Illusion Clear, the Phantom Lancer specifically. Who, did he just finish? No, he almost has his BKB. 3,500 gold saved up. So he would like to have that, but the Ags has been picked up on both Tinker and Kado, as we mentioned, and it seems like now V really wants to make a push with it now, understandably. Figure that this is uh, kind of a high point for them here. It is, but they're not waiting until daytime, and so it's a little bit risky. I mean, yeah, sure, Tinker Ag may be a good enough reason, and seeing as how the tower is pretty low, they're feeling confident. And they want to make sure there are no anti-Tinker wards, I think. Or no, Wyvern doesn't have the gem yet, so not a possibility quite yet. Are there? I'm kind of looking myself, but yeah. It doesn't There's look. one oh. on the east side of the okay, map. Yeah. There's one way over here. So. Oh, and it's going to be a late Roche, so that works in Alliance's favor, because Phantom Lancer may be able to complete BKB. Oh, he has completed BKB. Okay, so they're going for a smoke right off the bat. Want to check to see if Roche is up. Oh. Going to confirm that it's not. Now, if they go high ground, uh -oh. it's a little bit risky as General's in a great position. Yeah, he sees them. Is it going to go? It's a question. They're kind of retreating. Flame Break goes out. General just kind of trying to buy time, if anything. Oh, that's oh, kind of an awkward spot, though. Very greedy. Oh, my gosh. Well, the Boulder Smash actually connects. But he's distracting them quite a bit. He's going to TP here, and yeah, he'll be good. Oof, got a little scary. He actually TPs to the top tower, so because the team's actually going to keep pushing. So, yeah, he's going to be able to rejoin them now. And they have this ward, they know the smoke is down, so they see Lodo running around. The rest of the lines are in the back, and Wukong's command coming out on the side. They do catch PA in the midst of it. The Omni Sides has a very deep one, a lot of creeps, but the Shadow Grave goes up as he gets the last one back in. Does Phantom Assassin, so he's gonna survive for now. Possibly he could be as well. Laser's going out, but Limpra's in the foreground. The Doppelganger activated, and he's chasing after the Bat Rider. Bat Rider will fall. They do also catch the Monkey King, and now Pike get in the midst of it, but he spins right on top. And with that Battle Fury, the illusions are bye bye bye. They're get taken out quickly. And Tinker from afar just continues to launch the barrage of rockets. So, yeah, we see the power right there of the, the clear of Juggernaut. But Phantom Assassin, I mean, he was out of that fight really from the beginning, despite the yeah. not killing them. And yet it was still two for two. I don't know why Navi wanted to take that fight at nighttime. Like, it was just a few more, maybe like 30 more seconds until it turned to day. But they were feeling very, very confident. And... At least now Biver has the gem, so they're gonna, are gonna systematically start deleting all the vision, and this is a critical time to do it because Roche just Dyer's respawned. So 
A lot, uh, Navi have all the cards to be able to take this Roshi if they want to, which once Batrider comes up, they're probably going to start motioning as a lot. Oh, wow. They actually find, oh, that anti-Tinker War paying yeah. dividends. Pays off, and that might give it away that something's there perhaps, but they do get the pick off. I fortunately missed the catch right there, but he's going to be dead nice for 50 guy. seconds on the Tinker. And that's an opening for Alliance, kind of, but at the same time, wow. they're going still in for doing Roche. it. And Pika just straight walks into it. He, I mean, like, they know that there's very little vision on Alliance, but uh, this is kind of so risky. delicate. Yeah. And again, skins in the vicinity, Loda. He can't buy back either. He's dead for 30 seconds, and that's for certain. Pika just going to spin out, though. and But now you're going to... Really just softened up yeah, Roche. That's exactly Dendi can't buy back. And there's no way they try to, I mean, well, maybe they are. Who am I to say that? Monkey King, yes, they're going. BKBs are popped. Pie Caddy says Omni slash time. He goes right in. They're trying to get the kill first. Who got it? It looks like Loda picked up the Loda. Aegis. Really got the kill, but Loda picks up the Aegis. They get the turn call to Monkey King. And Pie Cat's trying to spin out now, but it's just too much chase, too much damage. Double kill for Limp. And this time, PA, he'll keep the Aegis. That was a huge mistake from Navi in a couple of ways. Middle tower is under I can understand why Navi are playing like so like rapid fire. They're like, oh, we got to do this. We got to do this. There's no time to just wait around because they don't really have the way to out carry a PA and a PL. But you have to be at least like, you know, you have to show some discipline whenever you're going for these objectives because like they went for that tier two top. They didn't wait for daytime. They went for this Roche attempt. Tinker wasn't up yet. You can wait a little bit to guarantee these victories and guarantee safety, but they're playing as if like there is a time bomb ticking, which it's not like, you know, there's a Naga Siren or a Terror Blade or one of these ultra late game carries, which PL, oh, Lasso, on to, yeah, 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 he's not going to be able to find that kill. Yeah, BKB popped in, Blink Dagger away from Batrider to prevent the turn, actually. So you know, it doesn't end up being any, but I'm, I'm totally there with you. Yeah, it's Navi that you can tell they're, they're almost a little panic mode here at this yeah. point, despite not necessarily needing to be there, at least just yet is, is the ultimate factor. But, I mean, MKB now picked up on Juggernaut, so he really is going to be hitting very hard here uh, in these future fights. But I'll say Dendi, Tinker, it, you know, his, his overall net worth, it's actually fourth in the game and hasn't really been the most pretty here uh, for him, so... A little bit uh, behind, perhaps, but he is working on that scythe and that that massive lockdown that that brings, of course, with the rearm, especially. Is it? Yeah, I but it unfortunately, the... these BKBs are like pristine on the side of Alliance. It's no oh, leak. That communication, Wukong's command again in return. So here we go. Omni slash already committed. That was only a creep creeps. wave, though. Uh, that's not the start you're looking for if you're now east. So now, will they try to retreat or will they have to fight this Pi Cat? Kind of. He's dealing with himself. Yeah, they're kind of big split fights by the cores right here. Actually, ports out on the uh, on the Juggernaut, and it looks like Tinker will make his way out as well. So Coddle ends up being the only one to die there. And considering how that started, I think that you're overall I, okay with that. I don't understand why Navi are taking these fights. Like they have an Aegis on the Phantom Assassin. You have quite possibly some of the best high ground defense in the game with Navi's draft. You have March, you have Aghanim's Coddle, you have Balance Strike, you have Firefly. What are you concerned about if Alliance finally had started approaching your high ground? Like, why do you need to take these fights that are so risky? They didn't even have the best vision. Like, yeah, sure, it's daytime, and so uh, you can see what's around Coddle, but that means Coddle has to get in the fight, and that means Coddle died in that fight. So I don't know why Navi are playing so panicky. Like, I feel like I'm like giving them too hard of a time, but there's no real justification yeah oh uh, it's it, it, it seems like and i i 100 agree with what you're saying and and perhaps again just getting caught up in the moment right here they're the ones that do have the fallback in the sense of worst case they lose this game we go to a game three but you do not want to give alliance that chance right here I'd like to close it out of course but they've had trouble doing so in this game and alliance is getting more and more ground as a result of this this phantom lancer yes uh we we kind of Talked about at the beginning when they draft him in the first place. Overall, you know, this hero seems like a weak hero in a lot of ways as far as comparisons to others. But as you're kind of hinting at, too, when it comes to the late game with the items, a yeah, full slot of Phantom Lancer is scary to deal with. So, yeah, they're going to have to. And this is a Phantom that. Lancer who is also building up, like, relatively tanky. He's actually going for a Basher next. And, you know, as it is, BKB is somewhat of an infrequent item on a Phantom Lancer, but he definitely needs it this game. And same thing with Basher, it's kind of infrequently seen on him. Like, typically you see, you know, like, Mant style into Butterfly or 
Scotty or other items like that, but he knows that Loda's going to be dealing enough damage. He just needs to be able to stay in the fight, make sure that Tinker isn't able to just bounce around, blink dagger around. He's just going to follow him around with Phantom Rush and keep Dendi under wraps. And so I'm liking Limp's build this game because he is able to create space for Loda. And that's what I was saying in the beginning of the draft. This PA is going to need her team to enable her. And Alliance are doing an exceptional job at that right now. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a bit of a strat pause coming out on either side, taking the time here. Talk about what uh, what they want to do, what they want to do to adjust to this here. There we go, though, the bottom tier two, it's going to be pressured and eventually killed off. Backdoor protection is up, actually. Eventually. Making it a little more difficult, but they're eventually going to get it. And they still have Aegis for a good two and a half minutes or so, and so... Yeah, every single time I think that Alliance are going to threaten high ground, they never do, but... They're gonna back off. There's still like you can. There are free towers to claim in the top lane, so no rush. At the level start adding up. Taking a look at the talent trees while we're at it. Yeah, Juggernauts. You know, pretty boring overall, but we're tipping for hell. 20 tax speed, 8 total stats. Dendi, he's gonna be level 20 soon, and has a choice to get that cast range with the magic resistance. I think cast range. Probably oh yeah, definitely. There. He needs to stay as far back from the fight as possible. From the Batrider. Phantom Lancer, he's not one we can see often, so that level 25. Oh, top lane, by the way. Top lane. Monkey and skins. Catches Juggernaut. Oh, man, Juggernaut is screwed. Yeah, Manta Stell. Get off that magnet, ties up anything, but he doesn't have Omni Slash yet. He doesn't even have spin. He's just trying to walk away with the healing ward. Can he maybe spin off now? He can, but he took so much damage at the last second, and he will eventually get picked off. So another pick off on a Pie Cat. He's dead for 75 with no buyback here. On the side of Navi. And see, like, this is another situation where I don't really like Solar Crest first on Monkey King, because, like, Monkey King was in position the entire time. And I'm not saying you win a fight if you throw down a Wukong's Command, but it definitely discourages Alliance. Whenever they see a Basher Wukong's Command, like, you know Tinker can jump into the fight whenever he wants. And you're like, do we really feel safe going for this? But if Dude just has a Solar Crest, which he put on the Juggernaut, yeah, it allowed him to survive for, like, another second or so. It's not enough to discourage fights or hell win fights. So Alliance take that. They take a Tier 1. Still have another 40 seconds or so left on this Aegis, so I don't think Navi are going to contest this without their Juggernaut. And Tinker's not in a good position to lay down marches. It's nighttime, so even Coddle's afraid. And wow, Hanskin's going in. <laughs> he's, he rolled a little too far right there, but you know what? He's, he actually ends up finding Dendi and pushes him backwards. So <laughs> you get the easy tower kill, and they're going to be satisfied with a couple of objectives taken there. Well, Juggernaut was dead that whole time, of course, so he's back up in about 15, but. Again, damage already done, definitely, from Alliance, and you can kind of see that Phantom Lancer getting more and more room here. Oh, Blink Dagger, okay. Yeah, he does go Blink. Instead of the Basher. Hmm. Well, I mean, oh, wait. Oh, and the Basher. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, so he's, and he has another 3k gold, so he's going to have Abyssal very soon also. Damn, Limp has been farming like crazy right now. And he has been. Yeah, so Tinker is going to have a very unpleasant time, and this is what Alliance need, because like I said, Na'Vi has some of the best wave clear in the game with the heroes that they've drafted, and so if you're able to shut down the Coddle or the Tinker, immediately high ground becomes that much more easy to siege. Oh, they, oh. Get, the, they get the vacuum! Yeah, he finds an echo. Where's the follow-up? Follow-up's not really nearby. He's going to try to go for a quick, quick TP, that is, but they... <laughs> no, not him! The Rock! You need the Rock! <laughs> and a well played to his teammate there. Viber's like, you could not be. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I think the problem was that Hanskin was going for the roll, and if he lays down a rock, then the roll will consume the rock. And so it's kind of difficult. Like, what he needed to do is he needed to roll in one direction and then kick in a different direction. But, yeah, wasn't able to get the angle, unfortunately, and Monkey King gets away. Yeah, so good escape at least for him, but a little bit of a slight misplay there from Hanskin. Tinker, though, that scythe, you mentioned it's it's not going to, you know, be the end all item by any means, but it's still, still a useful item to have on Tinker that uh, Navi will appreciate. I mean, seeing as how Loda's been having to spend a lot of BKB charges and now, oh man, they find Monkey King again. <laughs> He's on the run. Oh, the wall oh, just out of range. Oh, so awkward. And now he has Yo, support coming in. you got to be careful about going so far. <laughs> Never mind. One, one, gets deleted. Four, one. Oh, Top well. lane's getting pushed, though. Life. Fast. They get I guess he's about to take here. this tier 3. Yeah, no fortification. They get tier 3. He needs to get Keepies out now. He's canceled. They have a stopper? That. No, they do not. He gets out. And Batrider? Oh. Okay, well, they do have a stopper for him. 
At least Consider. kill him, but you know what? Getting a tier three, and now that opens up the shrines, and some objective for Navi being done. Bottom lane, though, Dendi is caught here by Hanskin, but again, where's the support? He's going to be able to TP no. out before Dazzle can get there, but it's only Dazzle, so. Yeah. Got kind of awkward for them right there. They're still here, and Viver knows, oh, it's daytime. He sees Hanskin, he leaks, and Pike gets recalled in. Omni Slash onto two. Jeez. That was beautiful. Now the Shallow Grave again, saving him for now, but that's going to be the end of him, too. Yeah, nice recall right there. I was going to wonder if they had the damage, but they certainly, certainly did. I don't know why Earth Spirit and Dazzle were hanging around there. They knew it was daytime. Even if you don't really know where the Coddle is, that's like you just went on Tinker. There's no way that Navi's going to be like, oh, okay, well, I'm sure they'll not be in our jungle anymore. And I mean, it is technically just two supports, but Dazzle dropped a gem. And so. Now, Viver is the owner of two gems. Give him some fan. Going in on Dendi. It's the vacuum. Does he have support nearby? The blinding light's not enough. 1900 crit overkill there for Loda. BKB committed, but you know it's already down to five seconds. Might as well guarantee that kill. He would have a, or he does have a buyback more so. as Dendi. Yeah, he might have to spend it as well. Radiance Middle Tower. How much of the BKB is down for three. Loda. I huh. figure they oh, watch lasso? you. Yeah, is he gonna buy back? No. Lasso in. Brings in Phantom Lancer, but no buyback still. And Limp will just kind of walk away. Well, I guess they're happy that they stopped tier three at least. Yeah, that's the main thing. They didn't really need to get that kill. The Limp getting that lasso was actually critical. Otherwise, they would have not really been able to do very much. And PA is the one with the Lincolns, and so that is definitely discouraging the Bat Rider from going on her, but. Phantom Lancer doesn't really have anything to protect. And speaking of protection, I feel like Dendi might need to consider a Ghost Scepter very soon. Because, yeah, Phantom Lancer does have a Diffusal Blade, but it's only one charge left, and he doesn't have a second charge in his backpack. And Ghost Scepter will save him against PA guaranteed. And that's, like, these daggers are coming from downtown. I don't know if Loda will go for the double dagger talent. Probably not, but still, Dendi needs to be concerned about all these right-click heroes. Yeah, actually, back to Talent Trees, you see right there, Phantom Lancer. He got his level 25, and it is the 20 strength. Yeah. The Phantom Rush range is so bulky for him and his illusions now. He's massive. 3,000 life. We have a fight. Oh, wow, they're invading. Wisconsin Command, they are invading indeed. There is no trying to be used for Earth Spirit. He is held down with the lasso. The Shiva's popping in the background, but the Shadow Grave will save the Earth Spirit for now. Limp, he is dropping low himself, but they get the stun on the Monkey King with some Bash Brock showing in there. However, Doppelganger over the ledge from Limp. He just wants to live, damn it. Loda is not going to live, though. As the rocket will snipe him out, a three for one turn. Not really a turn initiation, more so from Navi. Roshan not up just yet. He's up in nine seconds, though. If they want to do, uh, stick around for that, they're going to get the shrine in. This is going to, yeah, they, they should be able to do Roshan again if they see it. Yeah, Monkey King's standing sentinel. He won't, well, he just jumps off as it comes out. <laughs> That's a damn shame. Well, Coddle may come by, but they're going to push the tier two, or rather, Pycat's going to push the tier two while God. General inadvertently creates pressure up top. And they can go back for Roche. There's no real rush. The shrine has already been taken because of that earlier push of PyCat. They were able to open up shrines, and now it's difficult for Alliance to contest this. Loda's down for 40 more seconds with no buyback. And there's the level 25 talent, 20 agility, picked up by Juggernaut, who does have the butterfly. Another 2,300 gold even on top of that. So yeah, this is going to be a free Roche on for Navi. A nice little arcane rune here as well. Pick up, maybe Dendi gonna get it, or? I would think Dendi. He doesn't have BOT twos yet, so. Nah, I guess. Monkey, okay. Bat Rider will take it. Okay. So somebody pick it up, so. Give it to him. But yeah, Phantom Lancer, that Abyssal Blade is huge. But yeah, that was just a great initiation from Navi. The the go mentality. The all five were there, and they figured they had the jump, and they did. On Alliance. So they catch them off guard. And they yeah, take the Aegis as a result. One of the few times that Navi has been able to actually successfully initiate, because all of their past initiations, like, they've been initiating nearly every fight. It's just that they haven't been winning all these initiations. If they fight Snake, oh my god, that anti-Tinker Ward is actually an anti-Monkey King Ward. <laughs> Snake is going to die. Double the value. Double the value. That's huge. He's dead for 60. No buyback. And it's nighttime, so Caudal isn't too useful right now, but he still will be able to keep this wave pushed as no one in Alliance has built a pipe yet. Darkseer is probably the most traditional hero to do so, but 
and so he's opted for a Lotus Orb and Blink, and I definitely agree, agree with the Blink Dagger. The Lotus Orb, I imagine, is just to be able to purge the Mana Leak off of someone else. He has the Greaves and the Lincoln, so yeah, they really don't want to have to deal with Mana Leak, and obviously, like, Laser, it'll be able to purge off Laser as well, so a lot of value in all these Reflecty and Purgy items. Yeah. Scythe from Tinker, level 22 now. He's up here with Pike at the top lane. Playing that Juggernaut. Maybe almost going to try to bait him out of sorts, but that could be pretty risky if you do that, so... We'll see. Again, we know Navi is definitely in strength with their ult together, but they are doing this whole split push idea as well. And that's kind of proven to catch them a couple of times here. So I'm always a little bit worried when I see it. But I guess as far as taking a five on five, five I mean, we kind of saw at the Shrine area, but I think that was more of just they caught Alliance off guard. Right. Rather yeah, than no, I agree. Whenever strong. both teams are kind of fully aware of where each other are, then I think Alliance comes out on top because the name of the game is just tracking down Tinker. And that fight, they didn't really know where Tinker was, but Radiant's Limp is fully equipped to just bully the hell out of a Tinker. And so I'm, I'm honestly, I'm pretty sure he's going to be sitting on this last Diffusal Blade charge until he sees what Dandy, like if he ever goes for a Ghost Scepter, because it could be game deciding if he's able to kill Tinker or not. <laughs> this net worth graph is fairly entertaining. Quite a leap for Navi earlier on, and a big dip for Alliance, and now we're back up for Navi. Might go another way again. They spot out General with a few illusions. Juggernaut no. takes this tier two. Not gonna end up fully initiate, yeah, just the illusions, really. And Pycat's still going. They smoke up. Going for a flank. Yeah, trying to get Radiant has guard. this war. Monkey King comes down. He's going to be seeing Sapphire Dagger in. A Monkey going to be exposed. He'll drop like it's hot right there very quickly. And that's a cue for Navi to get they the hell more. out. They didn't activate any BKBs. The Liver's on the run. It's still nighttime, though, so they can't see anyone. Yeah, they're doing a great retreat here. There's Navi, and I think they all should be good. Biver, he's kind of the last one. Yeah, he's good. Not even going to go for it. Meanwhile, top lane, Pycat. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to go top and keep pushing that in. But oh. they are going to come in. And they canceled the recall. But no big deal. Yeah, it's going to stall on things a little bit. So, But clearly that's the game plan of Na'Vi, this whole split push idea between Juggernaut and Tinker. Similar to what Alliance was doing last game with a very meth slow, methodical game of slowly pushing in the base, and then we have that epic clash at the end and then a favorite Na'Vi. So... You know, that's what I'm kind of fearing for Na'Vi. <laughs> that's it's setting <laughs> up for a similar thing where the, this, is, this is working for now, and it's understandable why they're doing it, but I feel that big fight's coming, man. Oh, it's coming. It's daytime now, though, and so Na'Vi are going to start s removing all the vision that Dyer have established on their side of the map, so one ward goes down, and Biver will continue his duties. And that makes the lines very nervous because they are going to have to sit in this base and they don't have the best wave clear. Like I've been praising Navi for what spells they have, but Alliance don't really have very much. They have, I, like, there's really nothing to easily get rid of. Like you can draw aggro with Spirit Lance, but you're not going to be able to kill the creep wave because Limp didn't go for anything like an Aghanim Scepter on the Phantom Lancer. So yeah, this, uh, this creep wave is going to survive. These illusions of Juggernaut are going to survive. General. The tier three tower is getting very low. Lincoln's is applied to Phantom Assassin. Got that double Lincoln's going on. Yeah, it's Dark Sears Lincoln's on top of her. General was looking for a target, but couldn't really find it. Instead of just push it out, the Aegis has been reclaimed, though. And you see Alliance almost pushing out from there, being like, all right, now's our chance, but. <laughs> nope. I mean, it worked for them previously, but yeah, not this time. Instead, Navi falls back, and back to pushing out other lanes, farming resources. And you have Tinker, who's still not level 25, but again, almost there now as he's hit the 24 mark at least. And what does he get? Let's play the game there of one of the uh, the lifesteal or the 100 laser damage. Um, With the Aghanim Scepter, oh wow. Yeah, Alliance are really looking for something. They, oh boy. They hit Suneko inadvertently, yeah. but they don't do anything about it. They were kind of, oh, they did oh, knock him down. Oh, break it! And that's a dead monkey. But guess what's happening so for Seneca. <laughs> yeah, it's getting pushed. It's getting pushed hard. TP coming in by Phantom Lancer, and that's enough to discourage Pycat. Slow, methodical game. Oh, still more? 
General's in the area. He gets out too. So yeah, back to Tinker though. I'm almost wishing that he had that Phantom Rush range. Yeah, it's Tinker. Go on. Well, we like the uh, 100 range damage or the 100 laser damage that is. Correct. For the uh, Ags mm -hmm. value. Yeah, especially because the BKBs are whittling down. God, okay, now Hanskin getting leaked all over <laughs> the place by Biver. Vacuum right on top of him, though. Coddle has that ghost set her up. Blinks in. Limp wants to go in. Spear lands forward. He's jumping in for sure, and he drops Coddle pretty quickly, so I had the right idea and able to commit for it. Deck. EGM will claim the prize, and now they're going to back out. Oh, Batrider's oh, got though. Oh, now Limp finds General. Yeah, Spear Lance catches him. The Abyssal Blade's done. Doppelganger spawning more. Clearing those trees out as well, but General, nice staff forward. Trying to keep himself alive as long as possible. If anything, because the top lane, they're still pushing this, remember. Lasso onto him again. He's just trying to stay alive as long as possible. He'll finally go down, but look what's happened top. They're going to use Fortification. Can they at least kill the range racks? The Illusions can. Oh man, Loda in these marches. Oh, he's going back in. The Omni Slash. Bounce between the Illusions and Phantom Lancer himself, but it bounces more to the Illusions. And that's a power oh, up Phantom Lancer right there. And Tinker's dead that quickly. GG, well played RNG right there, Pycat. Abyssal in one second. There's the pull in with the wall as well. You see the damage for Loda as soon as he gets an auto attack in. And Limp will actually get credit for it. So Juggernaut gets picked off. So they get the range tracks, but it and comes at a massive to cost. Follow. Possibly, he's on the run. He has all the vision, whereas Limp is kind of guessing here. But he guesses correctly. That he does. And he and finds the Phantom Limp. I mean, oh. Can he purge it? Scepter. He can purge it. No, he's not going to. Okay. He's not going to. He doesn't care. Takes yeah, TP's right down. Wow. Navi just got dismantled one by one. They should have really just let that Juggernaut die. Or rather, let the Tinker die. Juggernaut was on the run. But they came in, and they lost the Bad Rider. They lost the Keeper. They're trying to out Alliance Alliance with these rat tactics, but these are the kings. They know all the ins and outs of these tactics. They lose the range racks, but that's a minor setback at best. Yeah, they know how to play against it, and they're doing so well right here. So now V, well, they have to use a buyback is the question. Alliance at least wants to force something out. Yep. Like, there we go, Tinkers. Tinker will try to bring that, that counter might be push. Enough. I think that would be enough. I don't think Juggernaut is going to have to buy back. Yeah, Coddle just res, so this should be enough counter push here. It is nighttime though. Nighttime for a good three minutes, so it's a good window for Alliance. There's that Illuminate coming out though. And the rocket's constantly used. Bowen are jumping to many the Lincolns. even. Yeah, the Lincolns though causing issue and eventually will fall back so that at least they get the tier three themselves now and that will open up the shrines too. For Alliance this time yeah. to take out. Juggernaut was coming up in 10 seconds. They spent BKB, they spent a bunch of Lincolns, their cooldowns were whittling down, so good time to exit. And Roche could potentially be up. It's not up, it's gonna be a late Roche, but you don't wanna have to lose a fight right before Roche comes up. And neither team really has the best vision around it right now. And looks like Hanskin, no, does not have any wards. So they need to start getting vision around the pit because the next big clash is definitely gonna be um, deciding who takes this Roche. Well, you see Pycat clicking the time right there, and I think that has to do with, you know, he could be up as you're getting at. So they're going to check right here, but as we see, it's not going to be up for a good minute 20 now. Except Earth Spirit didn't confirm it. I'm surprised that Hanskin didn't at least walk into the pit. Because, like, I mean, yes, it's not up. They're getting, oh, man, he actually, he's actually going to randomly find Dendi here. Oof. Bots the, two the poured in. onto him. No. Oh. So close. They had the right idea, but they could not catch him. And now Peel's away from the fight. They're all bringing everyone up top, and Monkey King spots out the Dazzle. Kill him, please. Oh my god, the Shallow Grave. <laughs> I was going to say, he did not want to Omni Slash for that, and he chose not to, which is understandable, but <laughs> that sucks. If you're Navi, you thought you had at least had a free kill there. Navi still have a, a, the upper hand right now. They're inside the pit. They haven't had to spend any cooldowns. General actually wants to go find a pick because they placed this aggressive ward. And so, yeah, Alliance had a window in which they could have started placing some vision, but EGM went elsewhere. Only Hanskin went north, and Loda's on fire. Are we really at that stage of the game? Dude, this, this is totally El Clasico. Yeah, like I said, that, Shout out to Darkseer games. that, that fight's coming in. We're going to see massive buybacks, and it's going to end shortly after that. So it's a matter of who's going to win that fight. And Roshan yeah, could a bunch be the telling. Of Navi TP icons on the center of the map. Are you seeing this? What's that? Like right here? Or not anymore? No. They're like a bunch of Navi teleport things. You're seeing Loda on fire though, right? 
Uh, what? He is on Am fire. I crazy? You're right. No, that that is oh, okay. happening. That's that's a little odd. Anyways, he goes in he right here. Kills. Here we go. Here's that big fight that we're talking about. Wukong's command coming out. Lotus melting. He barely able to Phantom Strike to his teammate right there. And he'll survive for the time being. Oh, the Shadow Creep also applied, but the last one, the back lights. It's catching him. It's locking him down. And down goes Lotus for 98 seconds. And meanwhile, spread fight over here now. Hoska's trying to get away. Limp's actually running into Pycat back into save him. Tinker's dead. Tinker did get picked off elsewhere, though. Where the hell was that? That was in the area right here. Yeah, near the shrine. Juggernaut was trying to save him, but in the end, Phantom Lancer was able to finish him off. And they are not motioning towards it. They don't know if... Oh, no, they do know that Tinker doesn't have buyback. They Tinker had to buy back during that high ground siege. So, oh, yeah. man, and Loda did take dual daggers. Hell yeah. So they're going to go in, I, I think. Well, they, they, they might, as you said, they know Tinker does not have the buyback. But this is a buyback Loda, so it's a little scary for sure. Pycat is in a position to push bot heavy. He doesn't know where the rest of Alliance is, so he's kind of playing it safe, but they're finishing off Roche, and he's going to start sieging bot. Darkseer is going to come back to defend, as well as Glyph being spent, but Roche is going down quickly. Well, back over here, General Finnegan trying to steal a trash to the time. He takes the Aegis right there. It. The Abyssal Blade's done immediately, but he gets out with a force out. What a steal right there. They get the kill on a Biver, but mission accomplished absolutely for Na'Vi. And that split push, he does not get any of the racks, but Pycast still hanging around the middle lane. That is, that's got a sting for Alliance, man. <laughs> they thought they had the easy one, but they did not. I I don't know who they wanted to give it to because both Limp and PA, I think both had all their slots filled out, but... I don't know. Whatever the case, Batrider gets out with murder, especially the fact that he didn't die afterwards. And, oh man, General has an Aghanim Scepter on this Batrider, so he can definitely shut down both cores of Alliance if he manages to penetrate all the Lincolns and Lotuses. You know what? That didn't register to me, but that makes a lot more sense now in the last fight. He had both Dazzle and PA uh, oh, lassoed okay. up. I was kind of wondering about that in the moment, but that makes a lot more sense. Uh, having that axe right there. Seneca, by the way, he's evading the vacuum. Yeah, he is... But and he's now, baiting. Yeah, baiting of sorts. As that's uh, th that basher, of course. The Wukong's command. They're trying to get Dendi oh. here, though. Boulder Smash is going to miss. Barely misses the angle. And he escapes. And Seneko's like, all right, now's the time to get out. <laughs> he will make it. Sweat. Yeah, what is up with Phantom Assassin right now? This dude is just on fire of all sorts. Yeah, this is, uh, this is what happens in long Darkseer games. Because apparently it's something about Ion Shell. It's like it, the particles don't time out properly and yeah now Jonas and Fam is on fire or no EGM's on fire Yo, everyone's on fire what the, <laughs> this is a sick cosmetic on Dazzle though I gotta say it's this pretty. whole fire stuff yeah so that's what happens when the game goes long then everything goes on fire and a lot of people are like oh they'll fix it in Source 2 I think Valve intentionally kept it in just because it looks so awesome all right well hope the FPS keeps up right here I hope Jonas and Fam survives going Jonas in. Jonas and Fam going pretty yellow right here. The vacuum comes out. No wall just yet in the back line still. See the Omni Slash is bouncing around the lasso. On to one. Who is that? That's Dazzle, actually, of all heroes. They did lose Monkey King, and they're retreating on one General's side. Back on to over run. here. General is going to be caught, though. That's going to be the Aegis, remember. Aegis claimed. Can they follow it up? You have to be careful about your top racks, though. No, he blinks Pycat's in time. pushing it out. The timing was perfect, but as you said, your Pycat's up there. So if anything, stay alive as long as possible if you're General. He is going to eventually fall, but they TP to the top lane, want to save the melee racks, and they are going to do that yet again. Alliance Link can BKB just is barely up do for enough. PL. He can follow. They know where Juggernaut is. They can... Oh, no, Abyss is on cooldown. Her. So he gets out, and Bifer still on the run. Has a Glimmer Cape up, but it's going to be wearing off there. But he has his own blink. And this enough to go elsewhere. So you. the rat will continue of Na'Vi. As far as back to the bottom lane for Pycat. Bots too coming into play. I mean, honestly, if they take Raxes, it's not that big of a deal for Alliance. They have like the kind of heroes that can deal with having a Rax down. Yeah, the lanes will perpetually keep pushing, and that's the last thing you want against a Tinker. But it's not going to make or break the game. What's the vision like in this game? Looking at the Radiant side right now, around the Roshan pit, of course, and that's really it. On either side, as far as the Dire goes, it's pretty defensive themselves, their own jungle, and then down here at the bottom lane, so not the greatest vision for either side right now. Yeah, ideally, they need to put up a few more anti-tinker wards to be able to pick the tinker, because that will be the real opening to start going for high ground again. Juggernaut pops the Manta, going to send out the Illusions. His own Abyssal Blade is, he has it all really queued up. Ready to be purchased here. Of course, buyback's important. Speaking of that, 
Right now, Loda's the only one without a buyback, according to the timer, at least. Just over two minutes remaining. So that's going to be on cooldown. It still has to have that in mind, I'm sure, if you're Alliance. And the last thing you want to do is have that death. And that's ultimately what that last game came down to of the epic fight and just simply not having enough buybacks. I'm, I'm like, getting a fever dream. Oh, man, are they going to find Pycat? No. They try again, but they can't. Yeah, mid lane now I see, like, the ghost of a fountain in the mid lane. Do you see this? Um, I see the TPs going on uh, now, but I don't see a ghost of a fountain, though. Oh, well, I'm clearly losing my this marbles here. This game is here. bugging out in general, though. I know, it's <laughs> we have some funky stuff happening, man. The, the mid tier 3 dire is, like, spitting. You see that one? No? No. Your game's extra crazy. Jeez. Oh, catch here. Extra We're gonna crazy. Catch Loda. This game's extra crazy. Flashy Loda, but he's able to Phantom Strike away. The Omni Slash is gonna be stopped. The return Breaks the Omni stun Slash. on a Bat Rider right there. Out comes the Wukong's Command in the background, though. And they are gonna lose Tinker, however. You see him pretty deep yeah. over here. Earth Spirit, Darkseer, they're Rider. in. They're going for Sadeko now canceled. as well, but he somehow gets away. Jeez. And the rest of them get out. Juggernaut, not even here. And Bat Rider barely escapes with his life. Yeah, he actually tried to TP. It got canceled by the last uh, tick of the poison touch because it stunned him. And he can get recalled. He doesn't have a TP, so he's definitely quietly breathing as now Viver will recall him. But yeah, they kill off the Tinker again. And Dendi just keeps getting, like, this is the name of the game. You've got to kill the Tinker. And so they have the right idea, constantly focusing on it. And Navi keeps trying to initiate. And the Omni Slash would have been nice if they killed off Lotus, seeing as how he did not have buyback. but. He will have buyback in 30 seconds, so that window has now passed as Pycat is going to continue his siege up top, but looks like Limp is one step ahead. He, yeah. he goes for the blink. Oh, he backpacks his blink. We're seeing the same thing over and over again. I mean, it's just, it's Pycat constantly Why keeping them occupied. As soon as they think they have a window on Alliance's side, it's like, you don't. You gotta fall back, you gotta defend, and it's just rinse and repeat right now. So we're 62 and a half minutes into this game, and it feels like we, we could be in for a still a bit of time here <laughs> as far as game yeah. two is concerned because unless they catch that juggernaut without a buyback specifically it, it feels like we're just going to keep going like what's going to stop this it's on a razor's edge because even if they only catch out the juggernaut the real thing will be if there's a full five on five engagement how many heroes go down how many buybacks are spent and how many of the cores are the ones that had to buy back so as of right now, everyone is buyback except for Monkey King and Keeper, but that will almost certainly change before there's another engagement. And you know, the next engagement might be Roche, but honestly, Roche isn't going to be as critical as it was in times past because all the cores are slotted out. So, like, they are going to fight around Roche and hopefully give the Aegis to someone important, but it's the fight that's going to matter more than the actual Aegis. I like how Phantom Lancer is keeping the full heart in his backpack here. He's just, been going back and forth. Yeah. He's been switching between the blink and the heart. Hilarious. Using it for the My region of anything. Progressively stranger. I think it's all these immortals. They are like all these new particles that were introduced. And like right now, Jonas and Fam is like, I, I yeah, he has uh, like I, a, I see what's going on. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> it's just it's just like a blob at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ectoplasm around him. He's going in. Puts up the Lotus Orb. Doesn't find anyone. Like Phantom Assassin's actually kind of cool. It's like the whole oh, I like it. mechanic. I yeah. like it a lot. <laughs> it's like this beam of light everywhere. <laughs> but it's Darkseer is just blech. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a not 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 some uh, cosmetics I would invest into. <laughs> but ones that Valve would almost certainly create. Phantom Lancer 14-0 and 14. By the way, he has not died yet. Yeah, I've been giving praise for how well Alliance was protecting the Phantom Assassin, but the Lancer was just as well protected. And I mean, credit to Limp as well. He's been playing it extremely well. They might. It's daytime right now. They see the Juggernaut. They put oh, down the wall. out. Lotus Orb is up. There you get the Hex on a Bat Rider. You see Juggernaut's having some trouble. He pops the Omni Slash level in the background, but the Doppelganger will destroy now. Pie Cat, he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Limp. Who's going to win this battle? The Rockets are coming out from afar from Jenny. The Hex comes out as well, and Phantom Lancer is locked down. So this could be the first kill to Phantom Lancer. As we're just trusting, he hasn't got died yet. There's a Streak Stopper right there. Of 1,100 plus gold taken. So Phantom Lancer dead. They lose Bat Rider and Coddle though. But Lotus like, you know what? Let's go back in, baby. I'm ready to go. Tinker gets two shot at that point. And Juggernaut, he's going to try to get out in time. He will as he spins no out. Basher. 
before the damage is real enough. But they killed Phantom Lancer, but they do lose three, including Tinker again. And goes back to now what? That was a 10x streak. Yeah, that's right. It was a, definitely a streak under 1.2k gold just for killing the Phantom Lancer. And he has buyback, but it's not really, you're not in a position to start sieging up high ground. And you might find Monkey King. He's playing very aggressive here. Jonas and Fan has blank cheap. Yeah, we're going to find him indeed. The side comes him. out, and should be an easy kill overall. So, drops a gem. Gem has been dropped, as mentioned. But, uh, you know, not really worried about not having a buyback, I don't think, at this point, with uh, where we're at here. So, he'll be back <laughs> up in about a minute. And good to go once again. Um, I mean, a Tinker, um. well, I'm trying to think of what, what I want to talk about. The Tinker with a 9,000 gold saved up. They don't have Moon Shards. Okay, Juggernaut does have a Moon Shard. PA and Phantom Lancer also do, so all the cores really have them. Uh, Monkey yeah. King, I guess you could say maybe Tinker can give Monkey King a <laughs> Moon Shard. Like, we're getting to that point um, of the game. I think Tinker needs to get rid of his Aether Lens now. It's Dying been a little bit too long. I mean, like, again, I don't know why he hasn't gone a Ghost Scepter or an E Blade, because I feel like that would have so much value right now. And, I mean, they, they think about going high ground, but Tinker's up in five seconds. So, Tinker's going to focus on himself. There's no one really worth investing in. And if there is, then Juggernaut will do it, because Juggernaut also has buckets of gold, and he's like seven slotted right now. So, yeah. And the question is okay, Dendi actually goes for a max Dagon. Well, level three Dagon, but yeah, he just wants to save for buyback. I. I don't know. I don't know why, like, maybe I'm missing something. I, I know that Diffusal Blade is a concern to get rid of the Ghost Scepter, but... Oh! Lasso, Phantom Assassin, middle lane, pulling it back, and they finish the job. It looks like it. He cannot Phantom Strike away. He is dead for 120 oh, seconds. He does have a buyback. Nice! Blinding light over the ledge. There's the buyback from Loda. Jonas a fan. Puts down the wall, though, trying to survive. It looks like he will survive for the time being. Denny now in the back line is dealing with Limp, and he's having trouble, but the Glimmer Cape will save him, it looks like. And now Pycat runs into Limp himself, but the Implacable Blade locked down. And Juggernaut's dead for 95 plus. He has a buyback, though. So Loda with his buyback there, committing forward. Is a line trying to catch the Nako, but he TPs out on top of the tree right there. Now, no buyback just General. yet from Juggernaut, as General also ports away before he gets caught, and the rest will be fine. And so far, he's not having to, but Roshan is up. Will he buy back for this, maybe? I don't think he's going to. I mean, PA did buy back, and it would be great if you could win a fight in the pit. But they do it a little bit too quickly. And right now, Batrider's getting some vision. They don't have a shrine, and Juggernaut, oh, he does have BOT2s. They could actually buy back and contest this. But if you lose, then you lose the game. Yep. Whereas, if you let Roche go, the game will continue. Oh, Tinker coming in. No, he cancels, actually. Oh. Something canceled him. Decides not to. There goes Roshan, and the Aegis is picked up this time by Loda. So we saw General make the big play earlier. This time he's not going to get the chance, really. So that's an Aegis for the Phantom Assassin. That's second life here. And Juggernaut's up in 35 seconds now. Check. Juggernaut is, again, getting to that point where his, where his inventory is. He has the Abyssal Blade and a Refresher Orb <laughs> in his backpack. Love seeing these kind of games, man. Yeah, this is going to take some substantial item micro coming out from PyCat to optimize. Oh, top lane. They find the Batrider. I don't, I'm don't. i surprised the General was going in on that. It just seems like that Navi, the kind of, they're, they know that they're going to get picked eventually at times, but just get as much damage on the racks as possible. Yeah, in fact, Viper's coming bodies. up here, too. Seneko's just simply playing a scout here for Dendi, if anything. Yeah. Which I believe him. in the most recent engagement, yeah, oh, okay, By, uh, Biber does have another gem on the courier, but it is nighttime, and so he doesn't really know where the Alliance wards are, but yet again, Alliance don't have any anti-tinker wards up right now, so vision is pretty paltry on both sides. We got a lot of level 25s to look over as well, by the way. We so do, let's, actually. Let's, let's start from the beginning. Do that. Uh, we got okay. Juggernaut. Obviously, we're talking about 20 agility. We 20 got the agility. 100 laser Correct. damage on Tinker. We expected that. Okay. Um, Monkey King's almost there. Which one of those I'm is pretty he sure doing? he'll take balanced strike crit. Yeah. Because his damage against PA could be deciding. Like, he doesn't have that much beyond a Desolator, but still, it's, it's 100x. Whereas strength, like, if he gets caught, oh, man, that Shiva's almost spots him. They did spot him for a split second. Right. They know he's in here, but it's like, oh, where? They did. <laughs> no vacuum. 
Uh, Vacuum's down. They bro <laughs> break the wrong trees. He's hiding as a tree. Uh, I love it. He's gonna be fine. He's gonna survive. He's gonna survive. All right, so let's continue with the taunts, as I'm yeah. sure he'll survive. Uh, 100 balance strike crit then, okay. So Coddle, 200 illuminate damage heal. Um, a lot of heal damage, man. It's a range. tough call, actually. It is a lot, but at the same time, being able to blinding light from, like, downtown may be pretty important, because, like I said, these BKBs are whittling down. So, yeah, yeah well, I'm, I'm putting a pin in that one. Batrider got the 8-second Firefly duration. He stressed that last game. Understandable. Phantom Lancer, 20 strength, we already talked about that. Dazzle, minus six second point that makes it a one second cooldown. How the hell did Dazzle hit 25? Yeah, by the way, there's that. All these Navi heroes. Uh, yeah, I mean, Poison Touch cooldown, if you just dump a bunch of Poison Touches on Tinker, which I don't know what the odds of EGM are finding Tinker are, they might be pretty high right now. As now Sheep oh, Stick on catch top Juggernaut, of the actually. Yeah, the Scythe comes out, he's trying to run, he gets stunned out though, and he will die again without Tinker's being able gonna to be do able damn to thing. Grave. Spam those poison touches. Yeah. That one second cooldown, man. Just going to spam it over and over again. Helps keep the lockdown close enough in general. It's going to be finished off by Hans. Going to actually... What is this about? Seneko's so far <laughs> in the base. I think he wants to find someone who's retreating. But Jonas and Fam has full HP, so he's not going to go down. And they're kind of pinging him. They find uh, him with the Shiva. Seneko's on the run. Okay. He doesn't have vacuum for another three seconds. But Seneko's pretty screwed here. Vacuum? Oh my god, he oh my misses god, it. He missed, and he's going to get back up on another tree and TP out. Oh my god! Oh boy. What on earth? Mid lane's gonna about? push though. Yeah, here we go. Back to the middle lane though. Juggernaut, again, will he use a buyback for this? None of the racks have died just yet. This will be the first. Oh, uh, range racks have died, but not melee so far. There's a fortification. Coddle is a blink dagger, by the way. Yeah, he's had that for a little bit here. Wukong's there we command. go. Wukong's command. They do want to fight this. The bash box on a fantasy. Knock him backwards. Her light. Down. And Her she Satanic's would not down. have a buyback either, but the Phantom Strike forward. She has Aegis, though. That's right, she does have the Aegis. Vac, so no she goes wall. back in, in fact. The vacuum, no walls mentioned. Off to the side over here, Limp. He's trying to find a target. He will find General finally, and General. Juggernaut's back. Having a forest staff away. Juggernaut, Omni Slash here going off at the front lines. Limp actually taking a lot of damage. Shadow Grave comes up at the last second. Melota is going to fall, and the Aegis will be popped. Limp, though, keeping his distance. He is very low on life. Can they save Lota now? It's the question. No, they cannot. He barely oh, lives. He eats the cheese. See, the cheese keeps him alive. Wow. They the have last Grave in second. one more second. The Dagon's not enough either, but he's still on the run. Remember, he would not have a buyback. There's a lasso. Double lasso. It catches both of them. And the right boss once again in trouble. But the back, it goes out. Down goes Lota. That is dead for 125 seconds. Pycat's falling over with the buyback. If this would he's be a tieback for him, but the heal from the healing ward. Limp is chasing. Limp wants the kill. He knows how big of a deal it is, but he's not going to get it. Stays alive on Pycat right there. And now this Fly is that opening for Na'Vi to try to possibly finish this game. Well, they have 105 seconds with Phantom Assassin dead. Pycat's going on this top rack. Meanwhile, mid lane, they just want to create space. Yeah. He's going for the melee. He's going for tier 4 after maybe. I mean, this will be interesting to see what he does. He does have Earth Spirit to deal with. And Limp is coming back. But is he really scared about Limp? They do end up killing Jonas a fan who buys back immediately. But yeah, he's actually going to spin out. He has a lot of teammates coming, though. 80 seconds Limp for Phantom no Assassin. Mana. Okay. So they have not really the best odds of fighting back. Like, they, I don't think Navi can win the game right now. Unless if Limp dies, which even if Limp dies, he has a buyback. At most, you're going to be able to take megas, but even that's optimistic because Dazzle's going to be up in five seconds as well, and then Limp can just go bananas. And so, Navi are playing it safe right now. Pycat doesn't really feel confident going for anything because remember, there's always this Blink Abyssal possibility on Limp, so Blade Fury's not going to protect you. Yeah. And, and there's a naked Rax down bot. Well, without Phantom Assassin, they lose a lot of that upfront burst, I PA feel like. PA has my back now. Oh, you're right. He just got in time for it. So 40 seconds left, but he's probably going to buy back here. There we go. Buy back oh, committed. Limp gosh. jumps in. This is an epic fight to determine perhaps the game right here. Juggernaut, he will kill the melee racks, but the vacuum wall comes out. The, the FPS is real, man. Lagging the swords, but the Wukong's man kind of zoned in the mouth. Monkey King says, all right, screw it. I'm dead. Can they now get Juggernaut? He does get stunned out by the boulder smash. He has to be popping the Omni Slash just simply to live, if anything. Maybe get the turn kill on Elota, actually, as a shallow grave comes out. But they are going to finish the job on Juggernaut, so now he's dead for 110 seconds right there. Wow, though, if Lota dies again, that would have been bad. Been but devastating. Now, can they make a turn on this? They're the ones that have to deal with both the top and the bottom, though, from the creep waves here. 
they have to deal with it, but Tinker's not the best at like hitting structures, and that's the hero that is really the only capability of popping in. At most, he'll just be able to help the creep wave out. And now Hanskin, looking for Bat Rider, not going to find him. Silver Edge Bat Rider. <laughs> oh, this Yo, is break game. that PA. This game, I think though. It's a, it's a genius. Yeah, it's it's an item. It's like, why not exactly break the PA, miss, and but it's just <laughs> a Silver Edge on Bat Rider, man. It, we're 75 minutes into this game. It's the only reason why we're having this stuff. It's great. <laughs> oh, so there are no transitions. buybacks available on anyone except for Keeper of the Light and Monkey King, but yeah. those are Navi's heroes. And so oh. if, oh man, they might find Biver. We'll he's TPing smash. out, but he's underneath Glimmer Cape. I could have guessed there. They didn't have vision. So uh, Monkey King's up in 10. He does have the Wukong's command, and that's itself Correct. a great tool for stalling oh, man, the game. It's getting spotted out. Oh no, Hanskin we're going really deep. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's bringing in the fountain to get killed. All yeah, right. uh, he went during daytime against a keeper. Like he was trying to snipe out a spot where Tinker may be, but you've got to deal with Firefly. You've got to deal with uninhibited vision from the Coddle. And so, so much for that. Yeah, and they're going to have 20. So. They hold it, and this is a really good counter push team. So that's why I was saying too, with the Juggernaut dying, it's I don't know if Navi is really that concerned, considering what they got both at the top and the bottom, and then having the counter push that they do, it is more than enough to hold them off. And Juggernaut's back up, so it's it's not over just yet. But now you feel that we definitely have Navi in the lead, and it's going to be a alliance needing to somehow win a big fight with no buybacks and then push right into the base from it. Yeah, because right now, not only does Navi have the structural lead with all these Raxes taken, but they also have the buyback lead. As their buybacks will be coming off in roughly around three and a half minutes, whereas Alliance's core buybacks will be coming up in four and a half minutes. They both are actually just Radiant knows that uh, Roshan is up, and theoretically Alliance could know, but I don't really think they're in position they, to contest this. They know. They saw them kind of going to the area with the ward over here, but oh, okay, as yeah, you you're said, right. can they get here in time? Oh man, they're going. Uh, it's going to be an awkward timing because it's going to be dead right here. PyCat's going to pick it up or somebody. Yeah, there we go. Seneco picks it up. And now they're near Pi. Loda has to Phantom Strike quickly to a teammate who has a Satanic now. He really wants to make sure to live. Just seeing the transition. You know, what, what about the item like the Vlad's? Like, I understand that it's still yeah. good, but that's, that's, the, that's an item he's had since the very beginning of the game, basically. We're 77 minutes in now. Is Vlad's really that much value anymore? I mean, you look at the net worth, Phantom Assassin's actually number five net worth, so PA just hasn't had the opportunity to form a seventh, eighth, ninth slot yet. He's been having to buy back the most out of all the heroes on his team, and so Loda has not really been having the opportunity to start mass stacking items. They see General, don't have a gem on Jonas and Fam. Oh, and then BOT in with Tinker. Uh... They might want to take this fight. Well, you see a bottom no, lane, they're <laughs> pushing it out even further. So, yeah, Tinker, that's what I was going to say. Oh, they Kaka cancel, Makura, but they get the side. They cancel it. Phantom Lancer. Phantom Lancer right here. He says, all right, I got to fight them. Balance Strike coming out with that Wukong's command. It's, it's making this very awkward for Alliance. You see, they wanted to defend their base, but they're kind of caught here. Now, Limpet just pops the BKB. He's trying to run away. But General, he may cut them off. He doesn't have a lasso anymore. But he has a Flame Break. Mana Leak on EGM. Limp still nearby. Will he look to turn, maybe? No. EGM says, screw it. I'm a sacrificial lamb. Good. Let me be. But Pyka in the middle lane, meanwhile. He's beating on it. They do have fortification. There we go. The wall combo comes out. The Abyssal Blade's done. Juggernaut, but the laser use as well. Trying to get the missed chance in, but no. Juggernaut is going to be picked off in the end. Now here the supporting cast coming in. So they lose Juggernaut. He's dead for 95. Does Navi continue going for this? Do they try to retreat? needs to go back for mana. They're going in onto. Oh, goodbye, Coddle. And now Batrider. Goodbye, Batrider as well, most likely. Yeah, Flame Break will not. Yup. Oh my god, it is going to save Yup. Are you kidding me? No, I only have to run into each other. Meanwhile, though. You look Sineko's at what Zaneko's doing, the melee racks. Oh, the side at the last second. He just barely can't kill the melee racks. He has the Aegis. Will he be able to do so coming up but after it? No, but the Abyssal Blade's stunned, and he's going to die again. Oh, so close yet so far. And they get cleaned you up. You have a lot. You have a lot of work to do as Alliance if you want to make it to the enemy river, though, because, yeah, there are four back buybacks available from Navi, but you want at least to get two or three out. Problem is that both the side lanes are pushing and your best chance of forcing out buybacks is going down the mid lane. I don't really know if they'll be able to get any Navi buybacks out. Alliance are just going to have to accept fate and let those deaths go. As now, Hanskin wants to invade, wants to find Tinker, but you know, he's not going to. 
Moonshard picked up by Jonas and Fanny. He eats it right there. <laughs> this is a Darks here. Moonshard, Refresher Orb, Octarine Core, Scythe, Damn. Lincoln, Sheba. He didn't take the 120 damage talent, though. Yeah, I was, I was hoping thinking he would about do that. that. Slicing people. Yeah, he's in hindsight, he's like, crap, I wish I could go back, you know. Maybe that's an <laughs> item they can eventually add, right? You know, uh, reset your talents. Could you imagine? Oh, I like the For potential late game of that. Era? Like, like, in a game like this? Oh, that'd be interesting. Yo, just like respec? You want to yeah. respec? I like that. Get that respec, yo. The more you right, do it, the well, more gold it costs. Back to protection's down. Limp wants to take this. No buyback spent. Juggernaut and Tinker are both up. Melee, they have fortification, though. Yeah, I'm going to pop it right there. Let me spam out. Not really hitting, though. Lasers, that definitely hits. Meanwhile, Pycat's pushing out the top. So Loda, he's trying to finish the job with that BKB, but he's not going to risk it. He'll back off, and they once again do hold. It's going Oh, does he actually bat back down here? But they're not going to fall. I'm watching Pycat up at the top lane. He's in the illusions. He tried to kill the racks in the middle, but that's what Alliance was worried about. That's the way you can tell. EGM finds him, cancels the recall. Defensive. It's all up to EGM and his. Oh, he gets the point. <laughs> no, he gets disjointed. The one second still have vision. touch. Meanwhile, Jonas a fan man leak on him. Fiver. Goes back in. He oh, wants to make a turn play, but there's a point from Denny in. on top of the bat ride of the lasso on two. Double but now, lasso. General, this is kind of awkward. However, Pycat's coming in as well. Lord he has an obvious slash. Gonna bounce around a lot is here, but Jonathan Fan gonna end up falling as a result. General still alive, and Denny locking down Phantom Assassin. Phantom Assassin's dead. He has a buyback, though. He uses it immediately. Here we go. There's that chaotic fight, as we're mentioning. Back to the base. Seneko. He is psyched up, but he wants to finish the main of the rest. We saw what happened last time. He barely did not get it. Is it going to be the same oh. here? It is going to oh. be the same here. The melee racks just cannot be destroyed, says Alliance. They this will game keep it alive. can't end, says Alliance. They have to spend a buyback. Oh, man, they feed Limp. Limp is going to get insta-gibbed. He has buyback. Okay. Okay, he uses it immediately right there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Navi wants to end it. So much melee racks finally goes down. Okay, here we go. So the melee rack just goes down as mentioned. So they used to buy back. One racks from Mega. Phantom Assassin. Nobody has buybacks on the dire side. Everyone's used it. This is potentially could be it for Navi as they're not going to go full throttle, though. Again, they'll kind of back off and reset things. But they do have a window here now. They basically have a good, you know, four to five minutes where they can feel comfortable about resetting and maybe trying to finish the job here. Not you can't spend too much time, though. Because then you afford Alliance to be able to get their buybacks back, and Seneko immediately bought back. And so, when Monkey King bought back, I thought that was the sign that was like, okay, we have forced Alliance out for a bunch of their buybacks. Our cores, our whole team basically had buybacks, but they're playing it conservatively. In general, that would have just continues to line on up, yeah. They feel, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, he knows. He knows that 900 true side range immediately blinks out. Animus this Aghanims is doing so much value. He keeps last target that doesn't own the Batrider. He caught the Batrider, or he caught Monkey initially, but now he's the one that's going to be caught on himself. Again, they really want to commit to this. There's plenty of distraction, though. Again, there they go. The Mega Creeps have spawned now. Pycat takes out the Limp Max in the meantime. <laughs> he's just kiting away. He's like, come at me, bro. Pops the Omni Slash. Oh. He has to fight right here. Bounce around a lot of illusions, though. And they're eventually going to kill him off. He did a lot of damage in return. The loaded to survive. Meanwhile, Four middle lane. Warning. There we go. Gonna Dark go Series picked off. So the Mega Creep comeback is going to have to happen for Alliance if they want to actually win this game some way, somehow. They're going to catch Hanskin, though. Although he'll go Scepter and Barrel Roll away. And actually, Boulder Smash comes out of return to try to fight them off. General needs to be careful. Limp jumps in. Doppelganger. No, he can't catch him initially, though. And the General continues to be so elusive here as he pops that Silver Edge now. And Dendy's porting in. Viper was picked up, you're right, the Wukong's command used in the back lines. But Denny's pushing into the base as his Bat Rider, and Seneca's just buying more time. Yeah, and he's gonna live. He could cancel this if he goes for a bash, but doesn't go for it. That's the illusion push. Manta style, by the way, on Tinker. <laughs> that's uh, huh. to remove something. I'm assuming the silence of Earth Spirit. Yeah. I mean, and just maybe the disjoint potential of daggers and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, like, far be it from me to tell Dendi what to build. If he thinks that he can go into an 85-minute game without having to build a Ghost Scepter against these heroes, then more power to him, because he is currently winning. It's uh, it's not as razor-thin as it was a few minutes ago. Navi can afford to make a few mistakes, but you give Alliance an inch and they're going to take a mile. So the bulky Loda, the new Arcana PA. 
as we see right here. <laughs> the ultra set on, Just set it on fire. It's the Valve way of put a bird on it. Oh, we got some old school. We got some uh, uh, NBA Jam in the house. Yo, no, Maelstrom there. Dazzle. That's that's slamming right there. It's, it's creep clear. It's just, again, with a game like this, you just start seeing these just radical items being picked up. The whole backpack play, as we mentioned. Uh, Phantom Lance has been doing that for a while. You know, Juggernaut is definitely the refresher of his. So, yeah, it feels like he has Omni Slash every single time. Well, that's probably why he's constantly <laughs> using that refresher to... And Make honestly, sure the Omni Session is so important for the damage, but the fact that he basically banishes himself yeah. for like a good seven seconds or so where no one can touch him. So now, something the we ultimate don't... test will be this here for. Well, something we don't do often, let's let's check on Moon Shards. We got uh, Monkey King has eaten a Moon Shard here, probably shared to him. Okay. Phantom uh, Lancer, yeah. of course. We got Dazzle. No, I was hoping Dazzle had one. Phantom yeah. Assassin. Oh, Darkseer, of course, has one, as we mentioned, and Darkseer that would one, be yeah. it. Okay. So Tinker does not, but I don't know if you're really looking to auto-attack on Tinker too much, so. Hey, that's the only thing he can do to take down structures, right? None of these spells oh. are going to help him do that. Oh, maybe Batrider could use one. He has a Hurricane Pike, a Silver Edge. Not doing too shabby True. with those right clicks. Navi are going to wait for daytime. It's a minute and a half, but they have no rush. Roche is up again, as Seneko is going to discover. Oh boy. Yep, this is what Mega Creeps does to you. You are very much so constricted in your base. Their buybacks are coming up. So as you said, daytime's up in 120. A lot of the buybacks are coming up in about a minute 30 plus. True. Very so, good point. Do you really wait? <laughs> I guess is the question. Yeah. Um, it's. I mean, you've taken as much of the openings as you've ha had because... I mean, we've seen Na'Vi, they have never really taken a head-on fight. They just keep kind of drawing aggro almost of Alliance, and then while Alliance is distracted killing some people, then Pycat is off pushing, or Batrider is off pushing, or Monkey King is off pushing. There's nothing left to push. Things are being well played. Look at how nice they are to each other. Yeah, it is team chat, guys. Keep... Really want to stress that. <laughs> this is team chat, not all chat. There's no BM going on here. 50 seconds on PA's buyback, minute and 20 seconds on PL's buyback, and yeah, it's going to be a very small window when daytime will be up and Alliance won't have buybacks, but I don't think a, a Navi are going to be able to seize that really, really small opening. They just need to wait for someone to go a little bit further than they are supposed to and let General pluck them out. He's hunting. Constantly sending in the illusions. Tinker. I'm surprised that Lin hasn't gone for an Aghanim Scepter now. Because they need more wave clear. I mean, hell, Dazzle went for a Maelstrom. Yeah, that'd be right, one of those backpack now. items, if anything. You know, you put that in while you're creeping yeah, like exactly. this, and as soon as a fight breaks out, then you put whatever else in. So, no, that's that definitely is something. Uh, you know, he's just sitting on 8,7400 gold at least, so might as well. I, although I can't really get to the secret shop right now, to be fair. So, true. There's that issue. Loda has a rapier queued up, but it's going to be a while before he completes it. Especially because he definitely needs buyback, which he now does have buyback. Cooldown has ended. PL's this cooldown is going to end in 20 seconds, but now they're inching. Yep, inching. They're slowly moving up right here with the creep wave. Jeebus, there we go. They found the chance. Phantom Lancer, they meet a scythe in return. He gets Lotus, so he's lost of himself, really. Out comes the Wukong's command, Ooh, though. Vacuum. And here we go. The vacuum in the back. That's with the wall. Doing plenty. As that, well, that's the FPS lag right there. The What's the end of the result? It down goes to Monkey King. Connell gets picked up as well. And Dendi also follows the Aegis pop right there. Omni Slash bouncing around for Pycat. But now he's trying to spin out through this. He goes down. And Alliance, everybody stays alive throughout. And no buybacks even necessary to use in that fight on their it's side at the least. Nico. And they will also catch the Monkey King off to the side. So unless he makes some amazing getaway Balance. here. There's the Balance. He ate the cheese right there. I don't think it's going to be enough in the long run, though. He too will be picked off. So Alliance, they do hold at the base for now. But again, it is Mega Creep, so... I 100% give Jonas and Pam credit. They, like, I... I'm giving Alliance the benefit of the doubt because, like, you know, they're Alliance, but this is a grim situation for Alliance by a long shot. 
the only way they stand in this game is off of plays like that. Jonas and Fan vacuums four, walls four, refreshes, sucks them back in again, walls them again, and they all are paralyzed while this PA is just slicing and dicing through them. Now, again, you're right, it is against Megas. Tinker did not buy back, and Juggernaut did not buy back, and I don't think they're going to have to, no. as PL is up top, or no, PL is regening in the base, PA is down bot, and Jonas and Fan is mid. Only thing he has to be concerned about is Batrider Lasso, but he's a very, very tanky Dark Seer. We have hit level 25 on everyone officially, so just kind of glancing real quickly right through. Monkey King did get the 100% balance strike rate, yeah, uh, 400 cool. cast range onto Coddle. So, yeah, that was kind of a give and take right there. He decides to go that route. Uh, yeah. Dazzle. Oh, yeah, we already mentioned that. Yeah, cooldown, of course. Uh, and then Earth Spirit, the minus 45 second respawn time. No, oh, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Damage, yeah, respawn time for sure. Right there. Well, that's uh, can... we have a 90 minute he game. He gets an man. Agadim Scepter. Yeah, I know. This is breaking some personal records for me. But what, I mean, like, I couldn't ask for a better game to break it on. Oh, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing just fine here. <laughs> yeah, no, this is entertaining Dota for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, that that's like, you know, what else do we talk about now? <laughs> We've literally talked about, about everything, you know? EGM becoming a carry, finished out a full Mjolnir now. Sure. Why not? Let's sure. Get a, Why not? Get a Desolator here. Just become right-click craziness. The idea of the, the carry Dazzle I've always been a fan of. He's oh, a, yeah, He does absolutely. a lot of physical damage, honestly. So. He does. Maybe not at 90 minutes into the game. No. But, <laughs> you know, it's never too late to start. Yeah. 70 to 39 hero kills. That's another thing. That's over 100 hero kills. My math serves me right. That is correct. Yes. 15 seconds until nighttime. The game has gotten so jacked up that it's not even going to be at the even minute. It's going to be like 8 seconds past the even minute. This will come so, in Alliance get a little bit of an opening for 4 minutes with that, but... Again, they're hemmed into their base hardcore. Yeah, it's <laughs> unless so. Know. Here's here's the way they win: is if Navi have to, if they think that they can win the fight, and they commit a Tinker buyback and a BOT, and he dies twice, and they commit a Juggernaut BOT and buyback, and he dies twice. Otherwise, you can keep on killing Navi one at a time over and over and over again, and. They will take it with a smile on their face until you cross their river, which so far Alliance, that's been the biggest issue. Yeah. Can't get past it. And again, this is just game two, guys. The potential, if Alliance is able to hold off long enough in some way, somehow, push back and win this game, it will be a game number three. Um, and the fact that this isn't even an elimination match, it just doesn't even matter. You know, this has just been such a it's great series. It's for pride. And, and it's really, for honor. That's the thing, right? It's like these two teams, they could be playing for a very small price, but I feel like, and especially these guys going they at it. They could be playing for like a stick of gum, and I assure you they will both be playing their hearts <laughs> out. They to win, yeah. Uh, see, now this is kind of am – I, am I the only one seeing this? Where oh, there's like me. lasers like flying to, yeah. around the map. What is flying around like, the map? There's just like lasers flying around the map for me right now. I don't even I don't even know how to describe oh. it. My my, my game no, is I just going crazy. I don't have that. <laughs> my game is officially getting to the point where it's like, what the fuck is happening? Because it's 93 and a half minutes in, and these particles are just everywhere now. What's your FPS right now? I'm at a solid 60 when I look at the dire base. Uh, it's probably at like a 40 or so. I mean, I actually, <laughs> you know, I, I don't even know where, where is that option to turn it on. Oh, it's in toggles. like the settings. You have to enable it. Yeah, yeah whatever. It's it's not it's not good. It's a point. So, <laughs> especially when a fight breaks out, <laughs> good old Wukong's command. And although I, I swear I've seen the patch that said like improved performance on illusions, improved performance on Wukong's command, and like I've yet to see the benefits. Yeah. Well, I I kind of have. I think Wukong's command actually has gone a little bit better. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I I have noticed that it's it's still not great. Like it still lags, but initially it was bad. Like the game would literally freeze for the like two or three seconds. Now now it's just kind of stutters a little bit instead. True. Haste. Oh boy, I Hanskin slowly places creeping a in nice again. and deep ward. Appreciate yeah, this deep ward here. Appreciated. Right at the base. 
Yeah, meanwhile, the vision on the other side obviously is plentiful. Or Navi. I, yeah, I'm almost at, like, I kind of want to like restart the game or like rejoin just to try to get don't rid do of this, it. but it, exactly. <laughs> I tell myself, anything, happen. <laughs> anything <laughs> can happen. This is part of the charm, you know? There's a, there's a reason why this exists in the game. It's to really hammer home what it's like to be in a 95 minute game. Yeah. It's like the world is falling apart. Well, oh, and Seneca also places a deep ward of his own. It's a little bit of information inside of the dire base. Every little bit helps. Yeah, any bit of information you can get at a point like this. And they've been slowly creeping up, though. It's like, what's the cue, though? What? When do they go here? Is it the well, next Roche? Well, I imagine daytime will be the next big thing for Navi. I mean, yeah, they could wait for Roche. It'll be up again. But they keep giving it to Monkey King, and that's great. But, like, he can't do anything with it. And he has one cheese stocked up. Ideally, you give it to, like, the Juggernaut or the Tinker, but they're fully slotted out. Pycat, I suppose, can get rid of the Lincoln Sphere at this stage? But, I mean, honestly, I'm surprised that he has the Lincoln Sphere to begin with, but, I mean, hell, he could even go for, like, a BKB now. He hasn't bought it all game long. There are options left for Pycat, but he okay. definitely needs to save a buyback. Oh, yeah. No, that's absolutely critical <laughs> if you're on either side making sure you have enough gold for that buyback. But Roshan is being pinked out. It seems like that's where they want to go. Unfortunately, it's only a regen rune here. So. Oh my god, I'm looking at the stream. Yeah, what is, like, Loda is, like, uh, infernal or something? He has just a yeah. massive, massive I, red aura around him? I, I don't know. <laughs> this is this is just uh, the boom shakalaka. Avatar here, he's, he's, uh, he's indeed... Quite buff. Okay, so Aegis is picked up by Seneca once again. Who picked up the second cheese? They put it on Biver. Uh, okay. Biver, yeah. Not on him for now. So it is daytime for the next three Everyone. minutes plus. Ooh, PL just bought something. And oh, PA. Would you care to tell me what's in the middle bottom slot in her inventory? Now that would be a divine rapier. That is correct. Well, and I see zero blade mails on Navi, so. Good you point. know, anything yeah. is possible. That's actually an item that's kind of worthy of uh, bringing up too for Navi, but oh, that's uh, fake. So Batrider realizes quickly and then gets out. PL does not have buyback for another 130 gold. I mean, so hey, every you know, second is valuable. <laughs> he's one creep kill, you'll have it here, and yeah, so he's gonna have it. And then there's Dazzle. 400 gold. Good luck. Yeah, you need that. This Mjolnir is critical. General? Tinker with the Manta style. Oh. Gets somebody, but doesn't. No return. And slowly pushing it in. The tier fours are still, uh, they're still powerful. They're full life, pretty much. Good to go. Yeah, they have three HP regen per second, so. Chip damage is not going to work on tier 4. It's definitely an intentional design choice. Make the way to the top smoke. lane. They're smoked, you're right. They can catch them here. Peel's in pretty deep. Ooh. Venom Assassin was kind of pushed out right there, but not enough. In general, it's just so like, you know, you just don't want to make the wrong move here. Nope. On the, on the edge of doing so. It's that very, very fine line of the move to win and the move to lose. Double damage rune is at the top rune spot. I almost it, They should probably put a, a war like at the rune spots, I feel like. Uh, is I that really that important, though? Yeah. No, it's not. I mean, yeah. it would be great, but you can't really dedicate that much time. You're going back and forth for it. Fair. Seeing as how you only have one more minute left of daytime, and if you're not going to do things during daytime as Navi, you're definitely not going to do them at nighttime, especially if you have this Aegis. Like, they have all the resources you need at this stage. They have all their buybacks. They have Aegis. They have two cheeses. They have daytime. It can't get any better. But, yeah. you know, this is this is the risk of going into a rapier PA. <laughs> the rift is breaking through. <laughs> uh, the, the map is just exploding, man. It's like it's setting up for just... The epic finish, 99 and a half minutes. We're almost to the 100 minute <gasps> mark. And they finally have Earth initiation. Earth Spirit is going to be pulled in. Trying to drop him quickly. Wukong's command zoning out the support. They do kill Earth Spirit. He's dead for 50. That's that buyback, of As course. A respawn time talent and buyback. 
General. He got vacuum. pushed in right there. That was a vacuum coming out, as mentioned. Jonas Fan, though. He takes a stun on his side of the back lines. EGM actually uses the Shadow Grave on him. Cypher to stay alive. Pycat, though, spinning in the midst of it. He's going to be locked down, though, as well. Taking some good damage. He will end up falling. Buyback on Earth Spear, by the way. Supporting cast seems like they, they didn't really want to commit. The general. They find General and they kill him, too. So, meanwhile, the Tier 4 bought him. The creeps are doing their job. Are they going to at least kill one of the Tier 4 towers? It's all good. It's I've all never been good. so hyped watching creeps kill a Tier 4. <laughs> they don't do it. That right. sucked for PyCat. You almost wish that he had a Blink Tagger as one of his nine various items because he <laughs> went in for the Omni Slash and ever so slowly <laughs> zigzagged his way into Tier 4s, which is the worst spot for him. He ideally just wanted to get a target, bounce back onto the Creep Wave, and maybe deal some damage here and there. But he went in, EGM was able to grave himself successfully so he didn't even die. He didn't have to spend buyback. And now it looks like the Yonis of wants to go. He's in trouble, but they are going to jump at the summer turn and dent. That's an echo, excuse me. He's going to be picked off. A monkey King, and he's the one that had the Aegis, though. Do they reset on him? Looks like it. Now they're running an S support, but again, without Juggernaut, you feel very scared here. Monkey King will get picked off. And no creeps in the base currently. So good job by Alliance, not only getting a pick, but managing to actually have the creep wave pushed out in all three lanes. Like, that's, that's not easy. <laughs> it's very easy to get distracted right here, and all of a sudden your base is dead, so... Yeah, they did have to spend an Earth Spirit buyback though, so that won't be available. But you did get a successful pick, but yet again, you can't exit your base unless a Dendi gets picked here. Oh, oh my god. Lane, yeah. Recall, recall. He's out. Oh my god. Well, he had a buyback, right? Yeah, so. no. Worst can you, case. Can you there. let me have this, please? Worst case. He's fine. All right, we have surpassed 100. So, you know, I know there's records out there as far as I longest think it's like 140 game. or something. I want to say as far as like a competitive Dota 2 match, like I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, well, this is I think so. The the record I believe is held by Cloud9 versus Scary Faces, and so technically <laughs> not like two very established teams, but uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely Cloud9's claim to fame and. It was a barn burner casted by OD Pixel and Purge, one for the ages. But yeah, we're uh, you know it's it's not unreasonable to think we may approach similar hours and times and days and you know times a flat circle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As far as the Alavi Alliance, the Alavi matchup, the Alliance Navi matchup here, um, something tells me this is uh, one of the longer ones, if not the longest. Like, I guess that's could be a possibility. True. Play, I, so. I'm, that's definitely a real possibility. Anyway, it's 102 minutes in. Divine Rapier, of course, on Phantom Assassin. Hey, Still let's just get another dire. one now. Let's, uh, yeah, buy it, backpack it. Get rid of that link in. Oh, Who needs that? General shows himself. That's been happening. Oh, they're going, but it's nighttime. He's doing such a good job this game of just slipping away. Look at that gem on the ground. It's like, whatever. <laughs> there are too many items. Yeah. I don't have space for gems. <laughs> I can't hold all these items. I mean, what do you want me to do? Just let it be. So, but yeah, Alliance, every time they try to go for a pick like that, they just ha they have like a 10 second window or so before they just have to fall back to base. Yep. And then start defending. So another round of let's wait for daytime. It's coming up in about 50 seconds here. And then we'll be good to go yet again. Roshan, it's not going to be even potentially respawning for at least a minute plus. Oh, they're kind of making a move up here, though, right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe try to really catch Alliance off guard, be like, hey, it's nighttime. There's no way they're jumping us. The problem is you need all five, and Seneco's kind of far away right now, and man, General's invading in deep. Oh, he might get spotted. Yeah, they knew he was there. Nope. Turn play? Nope, not going to go for it. I think the biggest issue, well, actually, Hanskin has a ward in his inventory, but the problem is that well, actually, does anyone even have a gem anymore? Yes, Biver still has a gem. So you really need vision outside of your base, but it's not easy to place it. And so I kind of almost feel like Hanskin should place a ward like right there, so that if someone wants to counter it, they have to commit. Because right now this Radium ward is super value. Oh. Rolling in, Dagger. It's daytime. Be destroying it right there. It is daytime now. Phantom Lancers, his mission is just basically push out that bottom lane this whole time. They replace the ward, and they see General, they sheep him. Oof, the 2300, oh my god. And yet, the more impressive thing is that it didn't even seem to take that yeah. much of his HP pull away. Yeah, it tickled him a little bit. All that armor and everything, so... Well, there, 
it's it's just that it continues to be that final line again. It is daytime now, and do they find the chance. Like, who's like the prime lasso target for Batrider here? Is there one or the Darkseer maybe? Darkseer. Darkseer is definitely number one, but the problem is he like basically perpetually has Lotus Orbs on him, and if you have to kill yourself to grab Darkseer, it's not worth it. You have to get a clean pick. And if it's not a clean pick, then it has to be one of the supports, yeah. because they are the ones who are donating these Lotus Orbs. Yo, Crystalis on EGM. I love it. Yes. The smoke up. It's daytime. Oh man, nice. Loda actually goes down the stairs. Limp goes down the stairs. Wow, they are really going for this, aren't they? They're gonna catch Batrider right here at least. The Batrider. But they save him. Gonna keep him alive for now. Hoskin went pretty deep. Gonna find a target. Boys in touch flat again. Batrider gonna be pulled back in by the vacuum. He's dropping a half life. He's gonna drive from this, it looks like. And yes, he's dead. To go. But in comes the Wukong's command. The Omni Slash bouncing around. Oh, One no. of those targets gonna be the But again, the Shallow Grave just saved the day. Pycat now spinning away. But the crit happens, and Pycat will fall. When it's all said and done, the other refresher, but Cheap meanwhile, sick. look back at the base, on by the way. Biver. Nice laser spam to take on Hanskin right there. He is staying dead, and Piper's on the run, but you see the base. Somebody's running back to Tier 4 main and oh. falling right here as they do end up killing Piper. But Denny just keeping his distance, spamming the rockets, and spamming the lasers. You got back at the base. EGM doing everything he can. They lost He's one Tier 4, this. and he, he is going to be able to protect for now. He needs to grave himself, though, for sure. Pop the shrine as Limp even comes back in as well. Over here, Monkey King just scouting. But again, one Tier 4 down, the other one about half-life or so. And they are going to now fight it off yet again. So this should make my they, they kind of win this round, but... Yeah, I mean, as odd as it looks, you look at, like, the open Dota story for this, and it's like, Na'Vi win a team fight by losing three heroes and taking a Tier 4 inadvertently, but that's all that matters at this stage, is now Loda has completed a second Defined Rapier. Um, honestly, I really feel like Pycat needs a Blink Dagger, because he keeps Omni-slashing, but it's always at the end of the fight, whenever Alliance are backing out. And so every single time the Omni Slash ends, he's all alone by himself. His team can't help him, and Alliance can just dedicate all of their spells to killing him. It, I also feel like something he could be doing too is perhaps switching that Refresher or bin for something like the Lincoln Sphere as a fight's breaking out. You know, that's probably going to be popped that's right true. off the bat anyways. And, you know, if that just sits in your backpack, is that really doing anything in the end? As we see right here, he's, Ultimate's going to be back up anyways by the time he resurrects, so... Hanskin soloing Roche. Yeah, that's... Okay, now Limp comes in. get some assistance This is the here. first opening that they've really had. They're able to actually do this and not have to worry. Oh, man, they're TPing. They see Loda. Everyone sees this. Loda. They know what's happening right here. They're going to catch him, actually, and Loda is in trouble. Two He's dead for 125 seconds of double rapier on the ground. And now Limp, he's trying to chase down Biver, but the Omni Slash cutting right through him. He'll fall as well. He buys back immediately, but losing both of those rapiers. Who are they even picked up by? It looks like Monkey King got one at least, and the other one's still on the ground, in fact, right here. So Lotus staying dead, though, for 105 Give it to seconds. Sega. Oh my god. And that might have just oh, done it right dude, there. He can, he can just hit Boundless Strike, and all the Lions will die in one hit, <laughs> guaranteed. The double divide. But, and he got that crit talent as well. Oh, Jesus. The final push is upon us. Hold for 90 seconds. Not it is. It is indeed. Trying to actually finish the series right here, let alone the game, and move on to the grand finals of the Summit 7 European qualifiers. Double Divine Rapier picked up by Monkey King as they kill Loda on the Phantom Assassin. Alliance tried to just make some kind of play. It didn't work out, and this could be it now. So here we go. The last stand is upon us. Doppelganger in offensively. Pycat They're is killing the tier four. The Hex, though, onto the Phantom Lancer. He's running a half left. They last him away. If he dies, it's over for sure. He is going to die. The crit's coming out for the Battle of Strike. The vacuum wall combination from Jeff Van. Good bloody return, actually. And EGM is sitting, sitting there as a turret. He has a kill on three. Buyback on a dead. He has to be half the Dark Seer <laughs> alone. It does so much work right there. Dendy's sheeps up. But it's just one. Oh, they get the sheep Hanskin off. Comes in. You notice a fan trying to run you away with carry. that surge. Another surge is up, but no, they're going to get another scythe. And he'll fall. So the massive buybacks, he is staying dead, and that will do it. It's going to be a victory for Navi as they take game number two and thus the series. I mean, fortifications going off, but the desperation at its finest. There's no way that they're coming back. GG, well played. Navi once wins one for the ages here in game two. They give Alliance a taste of his own medicine. Alliance have subjected numerous teams to this treatment where they're just hemmed into their base permanently because every single time you try to take a fight, you're losing Raxes, you're losing objectives. 
And ultimately, like, I, I, I feel bad for Lodo because even after the first game with that Naga Siren, like, he definitely seemed a little bit, you know, affected by their loss. And I, I, I guess he bought back the second, he bought out the second rapier and didn't have the money for buyback. Or I don't think they had spent buyback earlier because I, there were no fights for like a good 10 minutes. But yeah, he went down, gave up double rapier, which the double rapier didn't matter. It was just the fact that he died without buyback. Limp and the rest of Alliance thought that they had an opening to go for Roche, but they just never were really able to get their foot in the game. And I mean, the the graph is a flat line in experience since 80 minutes in. So you see how even these game, these teams were, but it was the structures that mattered. And Navi never really lost anything significant besides their mid racks. And they come out on top, they will be moving forward. Now, thankfully Alliance are not com completely eliminated. This was just a <laughs> winner's bracket match. And so they get a stay of execution and may get a rematch if they win against whoever wins tomorrow between, I believe, Empire and Mouse Sports, I want to say. Well, but, so I believe that yeah. was that was actually happening at the same time. It was, and I just got confirmation there. Empire did win over Mouse Sports 2 nothing. So, a so. uh, Mouse Sports is officially knocked out. It's, we, we are down to three teams. It's going to be Empire versus Alliance, and then the winner will play Na'Vi in the grand final, straight up best of three, I'm, I think it is. Oh, no, it's a, it's a straight up best of five, excuse me. This is what, how it looks up. It's set oh, to be. Christ. So, yeah, we're, <laughs> hey, if it's Navi Alliance especially, we're we're in for a long grand finals there, that's for sure. Yeah, set, oh, up, set aside your weekend. It's going to be like a cricket match of Dota. Yeah, no, uh, tomorrow is definitely set to be a, a great day ahead of us, guys. And, uh, boy, what, what a pleasure to be able to cast a match in a series like this. Because, again, this, was, this wasn't one of those, like, oh, well, at least game two was good. Both games were mm -hmm. really so epic in a lot of senses, um, and I'm just that's why people love these teams. Yeah, I mean they like they they always give it their all, and it's always a bloodbath every single time. Absolutely, and 120,000 damage done by Tinker in a game just absolutely absurd by the way there. But else, yeah, how much damage did Dazzle do? Oh, uh, only 21,000. Yeah, 21,000. Not yeah. really too impressive. But, uh, yeah, an hour and 50-minute match. You look at the hero kills, though, too. And this is a prime example that there's a lot more to the game than just simply killing other heroes. 80 to 49 in Alliance's favor, yet they were just simply trying to stall out as long as possible, and it was ultimately to a lost cause. So, Na'Vi do win and move on to the grand finals once again. So, that means our day, though, for today is going to be coming to a conclusion, at least for this uh this tournament here, the European Summit 7 Qualifiers. Again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. This is why we love Dota for matches like this. And uh, hopefully to see you guys tomorrow. Uh, Tsunami, as always, want to thank you for joining me on the series. Of any shout-outs, any final words from yourself? Um, yeah, just shout-out to both these teams. I, I'm I'm always excited. Like it was, a, it was an honor to be able to cast these two teams, and I couldn't have asked for a better game. And... Alliance, I have absolute faith in them that they'll be able to recover. It was a tough day for them, definitely, but they almost certainly will persevere. As far as myself, guys, I'm Breaky CPK. Always a pleasure to cast matches like this, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. What a finish it's going to be. Again, Empire versus Alliance. The winner of that is set to play Na'Vi. I mean, Empire and Na'Vi, too, would also be a great matchup, no doubt, but and anything can happen, but we are down to three teams. One of these three will be going to the Summit 7, Levin, Summit 7 LAN with $100,000 prize pools on the line, and looking forward to that. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you next time here for the Summit 7.